I suppose we could put a secret code on our packages. But then all you get is a blind date. Temperature has dipped in the last couple of days in Chicago. Perfect weather for football at Soldier Field as the Bears and Vikings set to go. Minnesota has won the toss and they have elected to receive. Vikings off to the 2-0 start. Warren Moon back in the starting lineup. The Bears at 1-1, a disappointing 10-3 loss to the Redskins on the road last week. Kadri Ismail back to receive for the Vikings. Todd Saladin will kick it off. And we are underway in Chicago. Ismail not going to go anywhere. And Sauerbrunn in his second year has been very impressive. And that has been an important part of the Bears' success. And starting at quarterback Warren Moon, he'll be 40 in November. A great 95. The 33 TDs of Viking record. But only played a little over a quarter in the first week. There's the offensive line. Features one of the NFL's best with Randall McDaniel. Stussy and Stringer, terrific tackles, young tackles, that is. Robert Smith, dangerous when he's healthy. Carter and Reed may be the best wide receiver combination in the NFL. Two tight ends to start off for Minnesota. Greg Gallon and Andrew Jordan. Smith Gallon setback. Moon throws on first down, and Chris Carter cannot hold on. Incomplete. The starting defense for Chicago, and they've been strong through the first two games. First, the front four, Spellman, Simpson, Flanagan, who's had some big games against the Vikings, and Al Fontenot. As for the linebackers, Brian Cox has quickly become the leader of this defense, along with Kane and Smith. And the secondary, Dave Wanstead says, the best secondary he's had here in Chicago, especially with that first-round pick, Walt Harris, who's been extremely, extremely tough. Amply now in the backfield for Minnesota. Second and ten, Lee gets the call. Cuts inside, has a nice hole. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets close to the first down up to the 29. Walt Harris, the rookie, on the stop. One of the things Dennis Green said he wanted to do, Mike, was run the football. And they want to run it outside because Brian Cox has been doing such a good job in between the tackles. I mean, he's been all over the place, and Dennis wants to get the ball outside. And that time right there, the Bears, it was second and ten, they brought in their nickel package. They had five DBs, so that actually only leaves six guys in there to defend their run. And uh, the Vikings had two tight ends, and they just hit the corner. A nine-yard pickup, and there you see their average on third down conversions. Three wide receivers in the game on the third and one, and Moon takes it himself. A flag is thrown on the play, perhaps a face mask. Moon carried a flag on the play. And Moon, you see, walking a little gingerly. And again, he said he really wasn't going to know how he was going to feel until he got out there and face the intensity. Dick Hentak, our referee. Face mask. face mask, defense, number 52, five-yard penalty, first down. So Brian Cox on the penalty. They brought him in for his aggressiveness, not necessarily that type of aggression, but he has been real sharp and already a leader in two games. You're exactly right, Mike, and what he's done, his attitude he's brought there, he's actually elevated the play of all the guys around him. So first and 10 for Minnesota. They get up to the 35. Robert Smith cuts inside and about a four yard gain. Harris in on the tackle. Smith carried the ball 30 times last week, a career high. Does not expect to do that, especially with Warren Moon back as the starting quarterback, who told us yesterday he's about 80%. He was very honest. You know, and, and in his shoes, he has to get these prosthetics put in, in inside his shoes. They slip him in there, see that? And it actually raises him up about two inches. So his foot is sitting up in the shoe, and he says it feels real uncomfortable. And he went on to tell us that, hey, I'm okay dropping back into the pocket, but if I got to take off and scramble, I'm really not that healthy. Second down and six. The long in motion. Moon quick drop out of the backfield. He's got Smith. Smith chased and taken down at about the 42. Shy of the first down. Danelle Wolford on the stop. As Robert Smith got around Vincent Smith after the catch. But another penalty marker is thrown coming in late. Smith went healthy. Has been a very strong running back for Minnesota, but that has not always been the case. You know, he's, he's a guy last week, Denny Green said he got 30 carries last week. And, and that's just too much 
for Robert Smith. But they want to get the running game going, so they didn't have a choice. But you're going to see him get a lot of carries today because they want to get the ground game going. And then, of course, Scotty Graham's going to come in, too, and relieve him. So they're going to use a little one-two punch back there in their running game. And, you know, this game's been real physical so far. Uh, there's been a nice battle going on between DeLong, number 85, the tight end for the Vikings, and Spellman, 90, defensive end. These two guys have been going after each other after the play, and that's what number this penalty is. On the defense, grasping the face mask. Unnecessary roughness. Defense, offense, number 82. Penalties are offset. Replay the down, second down. So Alonzo Spellman on the face mask. Kadri Ismael on the personal foul. Well, there you see to the left of the goalpost. He's going to grab. See, over to the left, he grabs his face mask. These guys have been pushing each other all over the last two plays. I mean, they're really getting into it. And this is the this is the black and blue division. I mean, this is a Vikings Bears at Soldier Field. That's what this stuff's about. Second and six. Charles Evans, the fullback, has checked in. Moon, another quick drop. Complete. Carter's got it and gets the first down with an extra leap up to about the 47-yard line. Mark Carey on the tackle, but not before Chris Carter able to get the first down on his first reception. Well, by getting Robert Smith into the game, then they can go ahead and get the ball to Carter. And that's their big play guy. They want to get him the ball. He takes it and watch. Watch the effort he gets. He knows where the first down marker is, and he just reaches out and stretches for it. Great effort on the part of Carter. Evan Minifield doing a good job locking around. But another first down for Minnesota. They're second on this drive. Robert Smith trying to get around, but has nowhere to go. The rookie, Walt Harris, with the stop. And Harris, very impressive. Their first round pick out of Mississippi State. They traded up for him in the first round. And the Packers, oh, check that, the Bears have not done that in a long, long time, but they were so impressed with him. Yeah, well, they had to go out and get him. And two of the guys they got on defense, Cox and Carter, I mean, Harris, were for the Vikings. I mean, Harris is a tall guy. He's a six-foot corner, and that's your prototype corner now. You need the big guys, and you need big guys because of the ability in this division they have with Carter and Reed. One of the things they love about him, he's an excellent tackler. That might seem like the obvious, but that's not the case in the NFL these days. Second and seven. Moon again to throw. Looking downfield. And incomplete. Andrew Jordan, the tight end, was the nearest receiver, but there was some kind of mix-up there between Moon and Jordan. Jordan was pointing to himself to say, my fault. Well, Warren Moon, you know, he's been out for two weeks. and well, He started the first game, and then he got hurt, and then he sat on the bench and watched last week, nursing that ankle and the other foot. He had an arch injury. So he comes back, and he's just trying to get in the rhythm now and seeing things, and he had a read right there. And what he did was he thought he was going to break down the seam, and he did. He cut the, they cut the route short, and Warren overthrew him. He, he wasn't on the same page. Third down and seven. Moving out of the shotgun. A couple of pump fakes, and it's complete. Good for the first down to Amp Lee at about the 41 of the Bears. So Minnesota continues to move the football. Ten-yard pickup, and they move the chains. There's Dave Wonstadt. He's looking at the defense, and he's concerned about the defense. Because if you've seen what Minnesota has done in this drive so far, they're really spreading the ball around. They're doing what Chicago is used to doing. I mean, about five different guys have got it. Now they get the ball out here to Amp Lee. First, they rushed, they, they rushed with Smith, and then they got it to Carter. I mean, there's been a bunch of things going on. So they're really keeping Chicago on their toes defensively. First down again for Moon. Little pump fake looking downfield under pressure and gets it away. Carl Simpson, and there's a penalty marker. I don't know if Moon was out of the no. pocket. It might be no, intentional. No, he wasn't going. out of the pocket. That's the thing. He tried to backpedal quick enough to get out of the pocket, but he wasn't out of the pocket. And that's intentional grounding. That's the call. Carl Simpson with his strong pressure forcing that penalty. Simpson, who in the offseason was given an ultimatum from Dave Wonstadt. Offense number one, loss of down, second down. Well, see, the, the, the pocket is in between the tackles. It's right there. So Warren sets up here. But as the rush comes, he throws it, and he tries to get out, and he doesn't get out in time. You see the push. Watch the big push by Simpson here. 300-pounder right over Randall McDaniel. And then he backpedals and tries to throw it to the ground. But he wasn't out of the pocket, clearly. Simpson got that ultimatum. Producer be cut. Dave Wonstadt told him that on the draw. Amp Lee finds some room. And once again, back in 
Chicago territory to about 47 to now Wolford tripped him up a third and long coming up amply an excellent receiver out of the backfield expect him to get more carries as you mentioned they were not happy with Robert Smith carrying the ball 30 times that was a career high for him last week and he's a guy that's been nicked and injured quite a bit so Dennis Green wants to make sure that he's healthy exactly right he's a good running back in Robert Smith but he doesn't have the physical ability to run the ball 30 times he's not a six foot 240 pound fullback third and 17 Bears showing blitz Moon hit as he throws incomplete intended for Kadri Ismail just too much pressure Kevin Minifield coming from the secondary putting the pressure on Moon who had to get rid of it and a fourth down coming up and that is smart defense by Wanstead you're going to see to the left of your screen here comes Minifield on the blitz and what do you want to do when you have a quarterback that's been out for two weeks with an injury injury rough him up rough him up let him know you're going to hit him the whole game and make him think about everything else on the field except his two wide receivers good defense Chicago Bears Minifield already has a sack this year excellent pressure that time Mitch Berger in his first year on to punt. Bobby Ingram, the rookie, signaling for a fair catch. And Chicago will take over their first possession at their own 12-yard line. 34-yard punt, no return. Moon failing the heat. No score here with the first. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day by the world's most advanced battery, the new Duracell Power Check, by the new Coors Light Wide Mouth Can, tap the Rockies with a smoother pour, and by 7-Eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. In Chicago, Dave Wanstead, his fourth season, concerned about his offense. They have not been short in the first two games. Their first possession of the afternoon. Robert Green straight up the middle, up to the 16, perhaps a four-yard gain. Darrell Talley on the stop. Of course, Kramer at 31 years old, all kinds of bare records in 95, but you see the numbers. He's struggling in the first two games. The offensive line, very solid. Fontenot, the glue at center. Heck, Perry, Berger, and Williams around him. Rashawn Salam still out. Raymond Harris and Robert Green in the backfield. They've been strong thus far. Conway and Timpson, the wide receivers. Wet night, starting for the injured Keith Jennings. Second and seven. Kramer's first pass across the middle, complete. And a first down up to the 34-yard line. Robert Green out of the backfield. An 18-yard pickup. You're going to see Green. He lines up out here at the slot receiver position. See the fullback in there to block? And he's going to come on a slant play across the middle. And Kramer just sees him and makes a great throw right on the money. Maybe that's some of the things they need to do to open up their offense a little bit. So a first down as they move the football very quickly. Kramer, quick drop. And nearly picked off. Intended for Timpson. Dwayne Washington anticipating there, but unable to get his balance. And here's the Minnesota defense front four led by all-pro John Randall. Fernando Smith coming off a good game last week. Linebacker Jeff Brady has been fabulous so far, along with the veteran tally and former Cowboy Dixon Edwards and a young but aggressive secondary. Washington and full of the quarterbacks. Griffith and the free safety Orlando Thomas. He's the interception guy in that group. Robert Green again. Okay, he's down, he's down, he's and he gets down to the 34 as you hear. Now let's go now. James Brown at our Fox Television Center and the latest update. All right, Mike. Eagles strike on their opening possession highlighted by Ricky Waters' three carries for 67 yards. This an 11-yard TD run. Eagles on top of the Lions early 7-0. Back to Chicago, Mike Green and Bill Moss. A McDonald's update from James Brown. We'll have them throughout the afternoon. Third and nine. Harlan Barnett has come in as a fifth defensive back. Wet night goes in motion. Kramer fires, and Conway cannot hold on. So a fourth down coming up. The Bears last year led the NFL in fewest third down and outs, or three plays and outs in terms of their drives, but they go out quickly here in their first series. Mike, one of the things Juan said was talking about, he says, Bill, we've been in third and long 16 times so far this year. I mean, we, we weren't that much in eight games last year, and there you saw it again, third and nine. They don't want that situation. This offense doesn't work well under that situation. Sauerbrunn gets off a beautiful kick. 
He has been sensational, but it does bounce into the end zone. Ampley lets it go in, and Minnesota will take over. Sauerbrunn, in his second year out of West Virginia, leading the NFL in net average through the first two weeks. No score here in the first. Punter Todd Sauerbrunn last week against the Washington Redskins. Seven times he punted to the always dangerous Brian Mitchell. Not a single return opportunity for Mitchell. Sauerbrunn who had a dismal season last year, showing a little extra toughness in his second year. Yeah, he's the punky punter. You know, see, he's got the earrings there, and then he's got the cut sleeves because his pipes are so big, or at least he thinks so. <laughs> I love that. He had a 65-yard punt in his first attempt this afternoon. Warren Moon fires complete. Ismael gets out of bounds at the 32. Walt Harris chases him out there. Ismael, that other receiver. As Harris continues the coverage, you have Jake Reed, you have Chris Carter. This guy gets no notice. Well, you see what they're doing. I mean, it's going to be the out stuff. They're, they're still not confident. Warren doesn't have the, the, the timing down yet, so he's going to take the small, short out route. Get a little confidence started, get feeling good. He gets it out to Ismail, and Ismail turns up field and picks up, up a first down. So first and ten. Evans, the fullback, back in. Moon's going to throw again. Fires. And incomplete. Ismail, the intended receiver. Donnell Wolford on the coverage. And a second down coming up for Moon. Dennis Green says that Moon's enthusiasm for the game is what amazes him the most. Still, after all these years, now 13 in the NFL, 19 as a pro, if you add in the CFL years, and he still loves to play. 40 years old, and he's amazing. You know, we asked him about, how do you do it? How do you? And he says, hey, two weeks after the season, he gets with a personal trainer. Diet, I mean, the stretching, the chiropractor, massage, all that stuff. And then producing, 40 years. Second and 10. Quick throw, Andrew Jordan, the tight end, up to about the 37-yard line. Jordan with a nice catch, having to turn around for that one. You know, I'm a little bit surprised, Mike. I mean, Dennis Green, he said, hey, I want to run the ball tomorrow. I think we can run the ball tomorrow. I want to, and the times I've seen them run the ball so far today, they've done well. And then they come out this possession, and it's been all throws. It's been some quick outs to both sides, and then to the tight end. I mean, I, I'm, to run, to get to get to these Bears, you've got to run against them. I mean, that, now he's in shotgun. So far, eight passes to five runs. Oh, looks, fires, deflected. Excellent defensive play from Marty Carter, who has been such a find for this team since coming to Chicago last year. One of the more underrated safeties in the game. Excellent play. You watch, watch Carter over here. And what he's going to do is he's going to gamble, and he's just going to bracket coverage to that side. Okay, he's going to go over there and help out Wolford. See the double coverage on Wolf over there? On Who's that, Reed? Yes. I mean, that's what they wanted to do. They just gamble on there. They're just going to pick time, third and long. They're going to pick a receiver to double team. That time it was Reed. Bobby Ingram back to receive. Berger with another punt. Short but nice and high. Ingram will call for another fair catch. Crowd a little disappointed in the fair catch call. So Berger's done his job. 41-yard punt. And for the second time, no return. No score. First quarter, Chicago. Their opponents for the Vikings have fared fairly well. Well, they have fared well, but you see it's still a losing record. And part of that reason is this team is built, I'm talking about the Minnesota Vikings, for speed. They're best suited on AstroTurf. And when they have to play on grass, it really slows down their track guys. Bears will start on their own 22, three and out on their first series. Kramer throws is incomplete. Michael Timpson feeling the pressure of Dwayne Washington. And second and 10 coming up. You know, the wide receiver spot has really been a problem for the Bears in 1996. You know, coming into the season, Wanstead wasn't worried about the wide receivers. He was worried about his running game and his defense. I mean, the passing game was so great last year, who would think that the wide receiver and the passing game would be a problem this year? Straight up the middle. Green has a huge hole. And all the way up to the 37-yard line, Orlando Thomas finally brings him down. But Robert Green, who had his first career 100-yard rushing game last week, with an explosive run. You know, they say Robert Green can't run the ball every down. I like this guy. Watch the trap play Perry pull, okay? He's going to pull, and then Smith right off his inside. See that? And it's open field in the center field. Orlando Thomas has to come over from the free safety position to make the tackle. 
I mean, that's what's good about this Bears. They have a great running game. The guys up front are well coached. 16 yard pickup. Raymond Harris this time, not a lot of room. Okay, Fernando Smith, the first one to slow him down. Corey Fuller in on the tackle along with Daryl Talley. And overall, what they're trying to do, the Bears, are the Minnesota Vikings are undersized guys up front. They rely on their quickness and trying to jump gaps. And what they're trying to do is wear on them and run the ball, forcing Aiden into the box. The Bears feel if they can get the safety to have to come up and support to stop the run, that creates one-on-one -on -one situations outside with the receiver spot. Green off to an excellent start again. Second down and eight. Kramer, another quick drop, complete. Michael Timpson, and he's in Minnesota territory. Rifle throw from Kramer, and a 13-yard pickup. You know, the receiver situation, see the drop-off in numbers right there? Look at, see? I mean, they've, they've had a great drop-off in 1996, and the only guy gone is Graham. He left. Now, he was the slot receiver, and what they did was they moved Conway into the slot receiver position. But Conway's best suited outside because of his speed. He doesn't like to sit down and read defenses. Kramer looking long. He's got an open man. Incomplete. Simpson was open and had a couple of steps. Dwayne Washington on the coverage, but he was a little bit behind Timpson. And to be quite honest with you, I think the Chicago Bears coaching staff overestimated the ability of this guy right there. That's Timpson. I mean, they thought he could come in and fill the void, and, and they didn't try to re-sign Graham. They thought he could do it. But so far, you see, he should catch that ball. I mean, there's a great di distance between the defender, and he, he hasn't caught the ball. He fumbled in the last two games, I mean, giving the ball up, and he's dropped passes like that one. Both fumbles were in the red zone as Robert Green doesn't have a lot of room that time. Robert Griffith on the tackle. And a third and long coming up once again. And, and there, there we have it again, Mike. That's what, that's what they're talking about. Third and eight or more. I mean, the Chicago Bears offense is not built to be in this situation. They want third and three. That's what they like. Then they can either run it or they can have a play action or, or do their thing. Now they're forced to get Kramer to drop back seven steps and set up and throw down field. This one a third and ten. And offsides. Conway. Yep. Curtis Conway. And, and the problems are continuing out there at the wide receiver spot like we talked about. You know, it's a matter of when... All start. Offense, number 80, prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Thank you, Dick Hantak. It's a matter now of, you know, they're struggling. What they need is, like, one or two really strong drives to get their confidence because you can sense maybe their confidence lacking. You see him jumping early. I mean, he was, obviously, I bet his number was called. I mean, you saw they moved him out there. It was third and long, and he was outside. See, the Bears know that he's best suited to get outside and use his speed. I bet his number was called, and he was just anxious to get a jump on things. They really want to get the passing game going, all these guys talking to them. Conway had 12 touchdown receptions last year. He's the guy with Graham Gunn. Kramer, complete, he's got Conway, and he runs for the first down. Conway continues down to the 32. Another nice pass over the middle from Kramer, and then Conway able to add to the 21-yard gain. Well, two things made this play work. First, a third and 15. Now, watch these guys up here. I mean, that's great protect. I mean, the Vikings rush four, yeah, but they don't get there. And he steps up in the pocket, and he fires downfield. Now, the second part of it was Conway. He was lined up outside. He uses speed down and right across the middle. And they get, the, they get the slot receiver to clear it all out for him. The slot receiver goes down and stretches the field, and Conway does what he does best, and that's use your speed. He takes it down and right across for a slant. Raymond Harris, huge hole. And Harris continues, breaks several tackles all the way down to the eight. A brilliant run for Raymond Harris. 23-yard gain. Well, they're having success running the ball up the middle. That's one thing they're doing. Watch the trap. This time it's Berger. He pulls and traps out. This is beautiful play right here. And see what they're doing. These guys are jumping upfield, and bang, they knock them out. Watch it. Boom. Opens up the hole. Look at them go. And there's nobody. Then they got to bring the safeties into the picture. And Raymond Harris, I mean, you, you really got to wrap him up low around the legs if you're a safety because he's a load. Here's where the Bears have had their problems in the red zone. They've been there seven times and have only had two field goals. Harris, another hole, and Harris tripped up. Fall down about the two. Dixon Edwards just got a piece of him. But another seven-yard pickup for Harris. Hey, and, and you know, 
Very, very logical, you know, very logical. If it worked that good once, heck, let's run it again. There they pull for Berger again. He's going to trap out, and these guys are going to jump upfield, and the lane won't be here this time. It'll be outside. But it's just a matter of Raymond Harris seeing it and picking it up. He takes the ball down to the two. Second and goal now coming up. And Jim Flanagan, the defensive lineman, is in at the fullback. Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, sending him in. Harris gets the call, hit behind the line of scrimmage, and taken down Derek Alexander, their first-round pick from last year, with a very important stop. Well, they're very lucky, lucky that Alexander got in the backfield and made a play. Alexander comes from over here and makes the play. But watch Flanagan on the lead block. If Fernando, if he doesn't get there, if Alexander doesn't get there, watch Flanagan. Well, he just lowers the boom here and knocks something. Look, ooh, Daryl Talley. Pancake. <laughs> you love to see that stuff. Talley in his 15th year and a loss of three. He's never seen a fullback like that, trust me. Third and goal at the five. Kramer looks, fires, touchdown! Bobby Ingram, the rookie. And the Bears, Eric Kramer with his first TD pass of the season. Ingram, the second round pick out of Penn State. 31 career touchdowns with the Nittany Lions. And he scores on Ford Fazio's Minnesota defense. Carlos Huerta with the extra point. And you can almost sense the sigh of relief for the Bears offense, Bill. Yeah, it's a big sigh of relief. And that's the guy they got to get into the thing. See him fake a block inside, then he turns out and comes down right along the goal line. That's it, Bobby Ingram. They need to get him the ball. And look at it, look at it. Oh, boy. He's relieved, huh? He's He's been hearing it. 11 plays, 78 yards, just over five and a half minutes on the drive. Bears offensive line very solid on that drive for a touchdown for Chicago. And, you know, that time at the end of it, that's what they needed to do. They needed to use those big guys. That's the Bears offense. Pound the ball at them and they get down there and do a little play action. Sauerbrunn with the kick. And Ismail lets it go into the end zone. So touchback. Minnesota to take over. First and ten at their own 20. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, Chuck Knobloch and the Minnesota Twins battle Frank Thomas and the White Sox in a fight for the American League wild card spot. All begins 12:30 Eastern, 11:30 Central, or 3:30 Eastern, 12:30 Pacific. Check your local listings. And there's a the guy, Tony Wise. I'm telling you, I talked with Matt Millen about this guy, and we both were on the same page. He's the best offensive line coach in the game. And you want to look at why? Look at his offensive line. Collectively, they're great. And individually, no one gets any honors. Robert Smith cuts outside, finds a hole. Another good run for Smith. All the way up to about the 29-yard line. Wolford tripping him up and some extracurricular activity down on the field after the whistle. Greg DeLong losing his helmet. Yeah, that's DeLong, the tight end. Remember, he was fighting with uh, Spellman before, and now he's getting after Cop. And I was talking to Mike Tice, a tight end coach for the Minnesota Vikings. He says, I like DeLong. I mean, he'll just stay after you. He's a finisher. I mean, he doesn't care. He, did, he goes to the whistle blows. And Cox and, and, and Spellman, they're not liking it. Get off me, you know? But he just keeps his feet turning and his hands in there blocking it all the way to the whistle. Eight-yard pickup that time for Smith, so second down and two. Carter goes in motion. And whistles long count from Moon. And Moore pushing and shoving out there. Brian Cox getting into it once again. Delay. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. So it's already started. It might only be week three, but you can tell the importance. Yeah, see Flanagan? Look, and they're double teaming on him. Then Cox comes in, and he gives a shot to Christie's helmet. I mean, look at him. And this is the black and blue. These guys don't like each other. And this is football, too. I mean, you're, you're soldier field. It's cold. It's overcast. And it's, it's the Bears-Vikings. 
I mean, you expect that stuff. I love to see that stuff. This, I want to get back down there and get in the mix of it. <laughs> Stay up here for the game. Second and seven. Ismael makes the catch and gets away from Harris. Up to the 35. And good for a first down. Marty Carter comes over to help out on the tackle, but a 12-yard pickup. It's interesting that Ismail's been the guy that they've been going to. I mean, Reed and Carter, I mean, they've tried to get the ball to him, but it hasn't worked well for him. I mean, Moon's been relying on Ismail. At the end, at the first point, and with all the talk on Warren Moon and the injury problems, he looks very sharp. First quarter complete. Bears lead 7-0. He's one of the best. We want to, look at this, see him palm the ball there? That's one of his greatest assets is the size of his hand. You see this guy make more one-handed grabs than probably anybody else. Oh, yeah, all he wants to do is catch touchdowns. Remember that quote? That was Buddy Ryan. Well, he's still cut, catching touchdowns, and, and Buddy's out of league. So you know who was right in that little dogfight they had. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't traded. He was cut. And now one of the premier in the NFL and has done it on a consistent basis. First down for Minnesota. Robert Smith hit hard at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Cox with a very strong hit. That's the attitude that Brian Cox brings to this defense. Watch him in the middle. Now they try to run a trap play over here, okay? But Cox just sits and waits, and then watch him come back inside and fill it. Boom! That's, what, that's the attitude he brings. When you've got a middle linebacker that makes plays like that, I mean, everybody up around you elevates to that. I mean, you want a piece of it. All of a sudden, you want to make those plays. Wonset says practices have never been better since Cox got here. Amp leave the car, has some room outside, and cuts up close to the first down. Mark Carrier to help bring him down. Well, see, you know, they're trying to get the See, there's more success running the ball. That's what Minnesota has done well so far the times they've attempted it. But they're not sticking with it. Every time they've run the ball, they've good, had good gains from it. So now they come back and they get a good run. Now it's third and one. That time they caught Chicago in a nickel defense. And they ran the outside on it. But that's what they need to do. They need to get the run going. I mean, they, they, they talk about it all the time, but they're not consistent with it. Ryan Billick, the offensive coordinator. Here on this third and one, they've had a couple of penalties on third and one. Robert Smith has it, and he's got the first down. Gets up to about the 47-yard line. Vikings mixing it up nicely. Smith, Amp Lee getting some carries, and Moon with a lot of passes as well. They need to continue with this run. There. The stuff they're doing running-wise, though, Mike. I mean, they, Moon still, right now, it does not look like he has his timing down. He doesn't look precise. Now, it's early yet, still in the game, but, I mean, early in the first quarter, I mean, he just it's just not there for him. He's just off just a little bit. They're trying some outs and some small stuff, short stuff with Ishmael to get him going. First and ten. A little shy of midfield. The long the tight end goes in motion. Robert Smith gets another call, puts back inside, has nowhere to go. Gang tackled. Cox Flanagan all in the vicinity. Right now from McDonald's game break, let's go back to James Brown. Check in on what's happening with the New Orleans Saints. Hey, Mike, Jeff Blake might be the best Sandlot quarterback in NFL. Take a look at this play action. Rolling right, drills a 24-yard bullet to Darnay Scott. Yes, indeed, Cincinnati on top, 10-3 over the Saints. Back to Mike Green and Bill Moss. Thank you, JB. I don't know if Warren Moon has Jeff Blake's mobility anymore, but he's looking not too bad for a guy that's got a sprained ankle and an injured arch. Second and seven. Quick drop, Moon. Complete Ismael. Breaks a tackle and gets the first down. Danielle Wolford unable to make the stop after the catch in an 11-yard pickup. A little bit of the sloppy tackling from the Bears defenders. You know, the tackles, watch big Stoozy here, Todd Stoozy. He's got, he's got Spellman here on the pass rush. Watch the job he does on him. See him stop the momentum of Spellman, and Spellman just stops. And Randall McDaniel comes in there and gives him a little elbow too, but I mean, that's what you need. When, you, when you're gonna drop back and pass, protect Warren Moon, you need the big guys. They got Stoozy on one tackle, on the other side they got big Corey Stringer. And those two guys, I mean, they, you, they need protectors at that tackle position. Moon fakes, looks downfield, now cuts it off. Intended for Charles Evans out of the backfield. And a second and ten coming up as Moon gets hit hard for the second time this afternoon. 
Carl big, Simpson putting on pressure again. Yeah, and, and he's, a, he's a load. He's a 300-pounder. He's their only 300-pounder. Watch the pressure he brings right up the middle. And he's going to come and get a hit. See him? See him get by Christie to center and lay a hit on him? And Moon is knowing that that hit's coming. And his timing's off. And, and he threw the ball behind Evans, the fullback. So uh, Warren is thinking about these shots. He got hit early with the nickel blitz. Remember, that rattled him. Then he saw Simpson coming, and he threw an errant ball. He's worried about his health. Second and ten. Moon on a fake. Incomplete. Jake Reed tried to dupe the rookie, Walt Harris. But Harris receiving some help, and Moon throwing it well over the head of Jake Reed. And not happy with his throw, either. You, you saw his expression afterward. I mean, his mechanics just don't seem to be there. Watch him drop back into the pocket. I mean, it, it, he just, I, I know, he talked about those arches he put in. He feels high. Look at him. See, he's up on his toes. He, he throws the ball. Look at his stance. His stance is facing the other way when he throws the ball downfield. And then it, the, the body language after, you know he's not happy with himself. And a quick start's coming. You're into the second quarter, well into it now, Mike. Do you go back to Brad Johnson? So third and ten. Moon fires. Complete. First down for Chris Carter. He's thrown backward. But they should spot it. Good enough for the first down on a 12-yard pickup. And once again, Chris Carter bails out the Vikings. Yeah, you want to get your passing game going, get it to him. Now, Walt Harris draws the coverage. Now, see him stop. Now, now he just fades inside. And that's the whole deal. When you want to go against Carter, Harris, you got to take him downfield and get him to plant his feet. And then Carter comes back, putting his body between the ball and Harris. Carter now two catches shy of Steve Jordan's all-time Minnesota Viking record for career receptions. That's just a matter of time. Moon looks, fires complete. Jake Reed run out of bounds. At about the 20, good for another first down. Walt Harris pushes him out, but a 12-yard pickup. Well, one of the things Chicago likes to do when you're in the red zone is come at you with the blitz, and that's exactly what they did there. But Minnesota's offensive line picked it up. Now, when you blitz, now you draw man-to-man -man coverage. And Harris had man-to-man -man coverage that time. So he played. He's off the ball, and Reed just cut his route short, took it, to, and Warren Moon threw a nice out on the sidelines where only he could catch it. 12th play of the drive. Vikings had another solid drive earlier, but they're still scoreless here early in the second. However, another first down. Robert Smith. Evans leads the way. Nice block. Smith gets around. Breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Robert Smith with a strong run. 14 yards for the Minnesota score. And where are they having success running the ball, Mike? Off tackle. You, you've seen since they started this game, Minnesota does not run inside over the center. They don't like to run over the guards or the centers against Chicago because they are stout in there. But they feel they're vulnerable outside the tackles. Smith, the second leading rusher through the first two weeks of the season. Only Barry Sanders with more yards. Scott Sisson on for the extra point. And the game is tied at seven. Nearly five minutes gone by. Jordan and Stuzzi, great blocks outside. Then Evans, the fullback, leads the way. Six points, Minnesota. By Boston Market, carving out a better sandwich. And by Dockers Khakis. Hey, nice pants. Here in Chicago, third-year left tackle Todd Stuzzi helping out on that Minnesota drive. Helping out. <laughs> and now That's getting help. Mitch Berger with the kickoff. Jack Jackson at his own one. Jackson up the middle and crunched at about the 21. Mo Williams uh, tackle. Chicago defense not solid. Missed some tackles on that drive. We're all tied at seven. Touchdown run. Watch 73 Todd Stuzzi with the good block on Spellman and the great hold on Kane. Look at him. Whoop. Just turn him around there. That brings the whole thing open for Smith. And some missed tackles. Mark Carrier. Yeah, there were some missed tackles on that play, too. I mean, they had the defensive backs up there to make the play. They just didn't make them. Kramer on first down. Incomplete. Intended for Ryan Wetnight. And the tight ends have not been overly productive. Keith Jennings, their starter, injured in the first week. Chris Kidney also out. And Wetnight unable to hold on to that one. 
Well, it's important for Chicago if they want to get their passing attack back on track where it was to get their tight end into the mix. I mean, that seam route is a great route to take the pressure off the outside guys. And what Wet Knight has to do here is catch the ball. And you have to catch those things in order for defenses to respect it. Second and ten. Kramer has time, fires complete. Up to the 38-yard line, Michael Timpson, a 16-yard pickup. We're going to see this play right here. Brady comes out on the wide receiver. That's the whole deal. First of all, see, see that right there? Great block by Raymond Harris on Darrell Talley. That buys him time. That starts the thing. And then Brady gets out there and tries to be on Timpson. I mean, that's just a mismatch from the get-go. Timpson said he holds himself personally responsible for last week's loss because of that fumble against the Redskins. As a fumble, green fumble, let's see. And Chicago regains. Todd Perry able to pounce on that one. And then Simpson's fumble last week as the Bears are on their way in for a score. Watch Jeff Brady. He's been the guy that's been making all the plays. Perry pulls out for the trap. Then in comes the fill right there. Brady with the strip. See him pull the ball down? Second down and 11. Brady has been sensational in the first couple of weeks. Here comes the rush. Kramer lobs it. Intended for Timpson. Corey Fuller had a lot of contact, but it didn't appear that that pass was catchable. Well, not, not only that, it wasn't so much Corey Fuller. It was Timpson initiated the contact. He was down there trying to get position to push off. But what he did is he got his feet tangled up. And Kramer feeling a lot of pressure. Watch Timpson. He comes downfield. Now watch. He wants to get back inside, so he initiates the contact. And he's trying to push off, and he gets his feet tangled. So once again, the Bears facing third and long. All too familiar scenario for Eric Kramer. Quick drop. Fires. Conway almost picked off again. Dwayne Washington with some good coverage right there. And, and it's time for the punting unit. Mike, there you had it again. Third and 12. I mean, this is what has been killing Dave Wanstead. This third and long scenario. And the Bears are finding ways to get in it all different kinds of ways. They've had penalties. They've had fumbles. They've had all the holding. I mean, everything that can magically happen to them to create third and long is happening to them. And until they get that thing rectified, their offense is still going to be in a funk. Amply back. David Palmer is not playing this afternoon for the Minnesota Vikings, one of their top return men. When you hear the word turnovers. Although they didn't turn it over, Green fumbled. Here's Sauerbrunn. Long kick. He had a 65-yarder earlier, but again, this goes into the end zone. Amp Lee lets it go. This one, a 64-yard punt. No return. And Minnesota will take control. Our Affleck trivia question. 13 Bears on the current roster were never drafted, including four starters. Who are they? We'll have the answer when we return. Tied at seven, second quarter from Chicago. I'm not curious, and they're all for me. Nobody can say no to new Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to the Honey Nut O's in new Honey Nut Cheerios. What's new is a better blend of real golden honey for a better taste and a bigger crunch. Nobody can say no to the Honey Nut O's in new Honey Nut Cheerios. No, you can't say no to the one in that Cheerios. It's new. Everybody loves this stuff. Can't believe he broke it at the company picnic. <sighs> Incredible. Our employee health plan covers him, right? Not deductibles or co-payments. So he has to lay out his own money. Your health plan can work better with a flag. Supplemental insurance from Aflac helps cover the unexpected costs of recovery so you can give your employees the protection they need and deserve. Any ideas? Yeah, Aflac. Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. Can you survive the program? James Bond, the program, tonight at 8, 7 central on Fox. 
Affleck trivia question. 13 Bears on the roster never drafted. Four starters. Who are they? Big Cat Williams, Todd Perry, Robert Green, and the quarterback, Eric Kramer. Minnesota with the ball. Once again, they start at their own 20. Moving on first down. Intercepted. Donnell Wolford. Nobody in front of him. Touchdown. Turn for Donnell Wolford. His 27th career interception. Well, you hear him chanting, hoop, there it is. And what Warren Moon didn't see was hoop, there he was. Because where he was, was in double coverage on the wide receiver sitting there waiting for the slant pass. And he just stepped in front of it at the right point in time. Winter's extra point is good. And just like that, Warren Moon's Vikings trailing 14-7. Wolford. Pro Bowler in 93, all Madden in 94. Injury problems last year was playing well. Watch Wolford. Wolford's going to be hiding over here, okay? He's just going to be sitting there. And look at Moon. He never takes his eyes off that receiver. Wolford stepped in right in front. See him step in right at the last moment, right in front of Carter. Played that perfect. See, Warren? He never takes his eyes off Carter. And then look, he knows right when he threw the ball that he made a mistake. There he is. Watch. Watch him on Carter. Watch him give cushion and make the break. See him step in front of the ball. Great break on the ball. And there was two guys here. He had the safety inside, too. Almost celebrated too early, as you saw, ready to raise the ball. And as you say, Moon, the second he threw it, he knew that he was in trouble. Could have lost it there. <laughs> it's all just in the nick of time. When will they ever learn? <laughs> Although that's his 27th career touchdown, his first career score. And Todd Sauerbrunn will kick it off at the 16-yard line. And Minnesota will start off there at about the 27. Eric Kramer coming on once again. Now they've come from different worlds to pursue the same dream. This is the story of what it takes to fight the pressure, face the pain, and survive the program. James Conn stars in the program on Fox tonight at the movies, 8 p.m. 7 Central. Richard Brown returned that on the short kick from Sauerbrunn. So move once again. Out on the field after throwing that interception. Robert Smith trying to get outside. Walt Harris runs him down out of bounds. Harris missed a couple of tackles earlier, making sure Smith had nowhere to go. And once again, after the whistle, fisticuffs. Cox right in the middle of it. Cox and Reed. And the referee, and they better watch it. His hat just went off. Somebody's going to go. This is where you're just not being smart for your team. You know, a penalty or get thrown out of the game. This is where Cox, at times, has run into problems. You know, it was interesting. Cox said that he didn't approach the interdivisional rivalry any different than any other game. But this is interdivision, and he is acting different today. Kind of like he used to act between the interdivision between Miami and Buffalo. Watch him. He's right in the mix of things. He's got a hold of a face mask. Oh, he's playing a, He's playing policeman there. Yeah, let's, let's give him Then credit. he was a good policeman, and then he turned bad policeman. Yeah, he tried to separate it, so trying to do the right thing early. Robert Smith breaks one hole and then gets hit hard at about the 33-yard line. No missed tackles on that play. Barry Minter. You know, one thing about Cox, I mean, he gets the people around him fired up. I mean, no matter what his approach is, you know, there's been a rap about him. This guy does this, this guy does that. But, you know, he said it himself, hey, it was okay when Butkus was in there ripping off helmets and spitting on people. He's a hero. Now, I do it, and I want to bring that kind of energy to the team, and I'm a villain. And he really has a point there. Although he says some of his behavior has even embarrassed his own kids 
And he's trying to rectify that. Third and three. Boom. Looks. Incomplete. Paul Harris breaks it up. Intended for Jake Reed. That's why they traded up for this rookie. Well, first, watch the pressure by Flanagan. Okay, he's had some big games against the Vikings. Watch him. He's going to come right inside. He's going to have the swat and swim moves. Knocks the hands down over the top. And there's pressure there all around him. And then, and then after the ball was tipped, you see he get tipped? Then Harris comes in and knocks the ball out of Reed's hands. Harris has been real active today. He's had eight tackles and now a uh, uh, pass back there. Yeah, that was definitely deflected. Berger short kick. Ingram at his own 30. Cuts inside. Ingram breaks a tackle and gets up near midfield. Bears with excellent field position. 36-yard punt from Berger. A 19-yard return for the rookie. Bears lead it 14-7. Fires up everybody around him. Watch him. He just came off the sidelines on defense. Look at him. A guy hands him a drink of water. He won't take a drink. That water is going to go down. He brings everybody's level of intensity up. Look at him. See? See how mad he is? I mean, some guys work at 9 to 5, and then some guys live it. Brian Cox lives it. First down and 10. Raymond Harris. Okay, he's down, he's down. A few yards and brought down. Jeff Brady in on the stop. Brady has been sensational since moving into the starting lineup. Here's a guy, spot duty, he's played for a host of teams his NFL career. Yeah, I know Jeff Brady. He was with me one year up in Green Bay, and he's been a guy, look, look at uh, Green Bay, look at all the teams he's been with. I mean, last year was the first time he got to come back to the same team he was with the year before. He, call, he wasn't used to it. Call him a vagabond linebacker. <laughs> He's got a home now. And you know, the thing was, he always played outside linebacker. And everybody said he's an outside linebacker that dropped. Well, Tony Dungy said, no, you're an inside backer, kid. Kramer, under pressure, gets it off. Intercepted. And it's Brady. Brady off the deflection. Down to the 43. And Minnesota with the turnover. <laughs> well, we were talking about him. I mean, his numbers are phenomenal for like, for 10 starts. I mean, he's, he's just so active. Watch, watch Brady. Watch him. He closes in, and then he comes back into pass coverage. And then Alexander, number 90, puts the pressure on it, and Brady sees the ball and makes a great, great heads-up play. Now watch the pressure up front. Watch Alexander beat Heck inside. Took the shot inside and off the corner. Came Dixon. See that? He just should have taken a sack there. He never should have forced it. Some guys try to force things, and, 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 it, and it always it takes them lessons like that to learn. That's Brady's third interception of the season. He had two in the opening week when he was the defensive player of the week. Robert Smith spins. Still going. Still going. And about five Bears have to bring him down. Jim Flanagan in on the tackle. Yeah, still going. Still going. Keep it up, Mike. That was the ever-ready <laughs> bunny. There he went. See, he's beating that drum. And that's, what's, that's what he is. That's exactly what he is. I mean, he's undersized. People said he can't do it. People said he won't do it, and he keeps on doing it. Every time he gets the ball, look at it. I mean, he touches the ball on first down, he gets seven yards. I mean, what more can you ask out of a running back? They need to feature him. Five yards a carry. He has been injury prone, but he did put on 10 pounds this offseason to try and help ward off the injuries. Second down. Smith again. And gets close to the first down, a couple of yards shy. Robert Smith carried it. Flanagan in on the stop again. Yeah, and here's another guy that keeps going and keeps going. I mean, he came in, and he was a linebacker in college. And he, he, he said he put your hand down or else you're not going to play. He puts his hand down, and now he's a defensive lineman. Now watch the play right here on Jirak. See him jack him up, then come behind him and close right down the line of scrimmage to make the tackle on Smith. Well, Lou Holtz, his coach in Notre Dame, told him that at halftime of the game because they had injuries to the defensive line. Second half, you get out there, you put your hand down and be on the defensive line. Or find another flight home. And he hated it at first. This man hit hard. And it's going to be enough for the first down. Walt Harris banged him. But a penalty marker has been thrown. So we'll just wait and see. So Flanagan says, as it goes against Minnesota, he says he hated the switch. But ironically, he would not be in the NFL, at least according to himself, if it wasn't for that switch. Yeah. He came from a linebacker motion. family. Motion man moving forward at the time of the snap, number 82. Five-yard penalty, repeat the down, third down. His father played linebacker up in Green Bay. And Jim, and you know, now 
he was brought up being a linebacker, he said. His, his whole point of view was from a linebacker's point of view. So when he had to put his hand down as a defensive lineman, it made it real tough for him. But he said he never would have been in the NFL as a linebacker, and he's glad he's a defensive lineman. Here come the blitz, third and seven. Moon gets it away. Ismail has it. Wolford tackles him, depending on the spot. Looks like it's a little short. Yeah, uh, the first down. short. Some great, great concentration there from some different people. First of all, timed up perfectly by Carter. Watch Carter come in and hit the A-gap just as the ball is snapped. Now Moon keeps his cool. Remember we were saying he's a little antsy under pressure? He keeps his cool. Then watch Ismail come back and lay out and make the catch. Nice job by Moon. First of all, keeping his poison there under the blitz. And two, by Ismail recognizing blitz and coming back to the ball. There you see the number of blitzes. Fourth down and one. And they go for it. Moon himself, penalty markers, maybe too much time. Whistles are blown before the loose ball. And it appeared the play clock may have expired before they got the snap off. We'll see. Yep, delay of game. Exactly what it is. And you know, actually, he talked about that one more yesterday. Still fourth down. They've had numerous third and ones. And he said they've had a lot of offsides that have caused them to, to kill drives. This time a fourth and one, same scenario for Dennis Green. Well, actually, they ought to be glad there that they had the offsides or, or the delay of game. I'm sorry, because he didn't get the first down. He wasn't, I mean, Chicago just took that center position right there and had it all jacked up. I mean, he did not have the distance for a first down. So now they get the back up five and punt. Ingram had a nice return. Last time out on the field is back to receive. So Minnesota comes up with the interception but cannot capitalize. Mitch Berger to punt again. Berger with a high kick. Ingram's going to let it go. And they're able to keep it in. Great field position. Mo Williams, another rookie from Minnesota, tracks it down. A 39-yard punt. No return. And very poor field position for Chicago and Eric Kramer. Speaking of quarterbacks, Troy Aikman will be featured next week. Troy's challenge on the pregame show with J.B., Howie, Terry, and Ronnie Lott. If you watch the pregame today, you know, Howie had his tough guy nominees. You know, he did, Howie does a lot of research. He sends everybody out there in the field and keep feeding them information back to him. Randall McDaniel's in there, Chris Carter. There's a few guys out here today. All the Bears linebackers are nominees. Bears start at their own one. Kramer gets it off. He's hit. Is it intercepted? Did he grab it? Yes. He held on. Kramer took some shot. Corey Fuller holding on to the football. Another interception. And Minnesota with great field position as Kramer really shaking up after that hit. Yeah, he really took a shot just as he was delivering the ball. Derek Alexander really lowered the boom on him. Watch, watch him come off the corner right here and hit Kramer just as he's throwing the ball. First of all, Alexander keeps his feet then right there. Do you see that? That pressure enables Fuller to step in front. And the Minnesota Vikings, for the last six years, they've been the best at turnovers. Robert Smith hit immediately. Alfano in on the tackle. Take another look here from, from the ground level. Watch Kramer drop back in the pass. Watch him come right up the middle. It was a blitz. Just as he's releasing the ball, too. Just a little Man, too much time. Foge Fazio will gamble with this defense. I mean, he'll, he'll bring the guys. That's one thing that we were talking to some of the defensive backs about. They said they like playing this defense. We're told here to be aggressive, and they play aggressive. Second and 12. Ismail, who's been very active in the first half, goes in motion. Moon, screen pass. And at the 28, excellent pursuit. And Lee has nowhere to go. Alonzo Spellman with good pursuit. You know, and, and now you have to sit there and start talking about the Bears' defense. I mean, twice now, twice they've had interceptions. And see how these guys get tough? And Spellman, watch him. Watch Spellman come in here. I mean, he's just all over it. He just smells this screen and comes right back out. That's what you do when you get into a screen. I mean, you make your...
rush, then you retrace your step and get back to the ball. And Alonzo did exactly that when he recognized what it was. Jacksonville signed Spellman to a free agent contract, but the Bears matched it, gave him a ton of money, and Spellman paying dividends on that play. Two-minute warning here on the second quarter from Chicago. Bears still in front. In Chicago, where the Bears leading the Vikings 14-7, Pretty exciting first half. Chicago finally got that offense going. They scored a touchdown. Eric Kramer threw his first TD pass. Warren Moon came back, led them on a drive. Turnovers have been the story in the second quarter. Turnovers have been the story. It's been hurting the Bears, actually. They've been able to do it on the ground, their running attack, and that's their bread and butter. I'm still not convinced that they've cured their passing problem. We have to take a look. I mean, you have the interceptions, and it's just not gelling for the Bears the way they had hoped. But the Bears' defense is doing a great job. They've been down here in the red zone three times now and haven't let them in. Kramer's thrown two interceptions. Warren Moon won, but the one that Moon threw, Danelle Wolford returned for a touchdown. That was Chicago's other score. Third down as Moon goes into the shotgun. Moon looks, fires downfield. Touchdown, Jake Reed. Sensational catch. Twenty-nine yards scoring strike, and Jake Reed hauls it in. And Minnesota can tie it up in the extra point. This time they capitalize on the Chicago turnover. All tied up. Scott Sisson does his job, and we're even at fourteen. Jake Reed, well, just a sensational catch, Bill. Well, watch the protection up front, first of all. Cox is way out here. He's going to come inside, and then Flanagan's going to try to loop around. But watch Christie come out and pick him up. See that pickup? That buys Moon time. And then downfield, they just pick it on the rookie. They're picking on Harris. And then on the other side of the line of scrimmage, watch Stussy on Spellman. See what he's doing? Stopping Spellman's momentum, standing him up. Has a nice handful of cloth, too, by the way. Ooh! Boy, <laughs> your defensive lineman. You hate that. And Reed with his first touchdown catch of the season. He had nine last year. Here's Reed. Watch him take Harris deep and then hit for the post. And he just jumps up. Warren Moon just threw a beautiful ball there. See the protection? Warren Moon's poised in the pocket, steps up, sees it, and throws a beautiful ball. He had no pressure around him, great feet set up, and then Reed just went up and over Harris. Three plays, 24 yards, minute 16 on the drive. And Jake Reed helps to tie the game up. And again, off that Eric Kramer interception. Walt Harris has had a strong start this season, but it's not all going to be easy. There's no question. Well, you see, you see Walt, he has his head down there, and he probably feels bad. But teams have been throwing the ball at him, and they're going to continue to throw the ball at him because he's a rookie. But overall, he's coming out okay. Jack Jackson runs it up to about the 24. Ben Hanks among those in on the tackle. And coming up. Uh, the Dockers Khakis halftime report. JB and Terry bring you scores and highlights from week three of the NFL. Also, don't mix Fox NFL Sunday's choice cuts, the best plays of the NFL from last week. All coming up on the Dockers Khakis halftime report. Yeah, Walt, see, he's got his head down. He's thinking about it. He can't get caught up in that. I mean, he gave up a touchdown. Okay. He had good coverage, but just at the end, I mean, you can't get down on a, on a corner for that. He didn't do anything wrong. He just got out jumped. A 39-year-old guy picking on the kid. Straight up the middle is Green, and Green spins. He's got the first down up to the 37-yard line. Harlan Barnett finally brings him down. Boy, Robert Green, he's awfully exciting to watch. He is exciting. I mean, I like the kid. When you watch him, he really jumps out at you on film. He's small. He's only 5'8", but he really reminds me of a Barry Sanders type, the way his low center of gravity. He's averaging over five yards a carry this year. Kramer throws incomplete as Kramer takes another whack. Darrell Talley and Kramer shaking up again. Well, they got into the no, no huddle offense, you know, in the two minute, and they're trying to move the ball downfield. And when you do that, defensive lineman, you know it's time to rush the passer. And Fernando Smith, 95, he rushes the passer on this play. Watch him come outside. Then he comes back underneath Big Cat, and boom. And you know what? That looked like he was more than two steps away after the ball was released. 
Last year, Kramer was sacked only 15 times the entire season. That was the lowest in the NFL. Last week against the Redskins, he was sacked four times. And as Dave Craig warming up, the veteran is now the backup. And Kramer taking heat again. You know, and a lot of people around are saying it's because Kramer and he's holding the ball too long. But I, I think the problem has been the timing with the right wide receivers. Take a look here. Watch, watch the rush by Fernando Smith. He comes up on Big Cat, and then he comes back underneath him. Okay, now Randall draws the guard out here. Now watch the open hole right there. He's going to lower it, boom. And the ball's gone. See, that's a late hit. I mean, I, I don't like to say that because I'm a defensive lineman. I know when you go through all that trouble, you like to hit the quarterback. But facts were facts, and that ball was out. That looked like a second step after he released it. Watch him. Watch him come out. Now watch the ball release his hand. Watch. Count. One, two, and a half. That's two and a half. You're only allowed one and a half, actually. And that's rarely not called now because the officials, that's a point of emphasis, has been the last couple of years to protect the quarterback. Kramer gets up certainly a little better than he did lying down. He's certainly a tough quarterback. He's taken his share of wax throughout the NFL career. I would, I'll be honest with you, Minnesota got lucky there. They really caught a break. Because if you can rattle the quarterback around like that and get away with it, I mean, that's, that's going to put some doubt in his mind. So 37-year-old Dave Craig in his 17th year in the league. He'll come in. This is his first season with the Chicago Bears. Kramer's going to watch. We'll get an update. He took every snap last year, Kramer did, only quarterback in the NFL to do so. You know something about Dave Craig? He's great off the bench. A couple of years ago, did that for the Detroit Lions. Struggled last year, Arizona. Mishandles it, fumbles it, and appears to have fallen on it. So Chicago will hold on. And another thing about Dave Craig, not only is he great off the bench, he is the all-time leader in fumbles. Dave that, Craig. That's the 145th fumble of yeah, his and, career. And he gets another one here. And a knock on him is he has small hands. Watch the ball come out of his hand. I mean, that's been a wrap over the years. His hands are too small for the ball. Vikings call timeout. Certainly not the way you want to start. 116 remaining here in the second quarter, tied at 14. Next week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. Packers battle these Vikings, and the Bears will take on the Lions, plus other exciting regional action. All begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Check local listings for the game and time in your area right here on Fox. Hey, if you don't think those games are great, I mean, Dallas and Buffalo, I mean, interdivision in the NFC Central. He played in a few of those. Well, yeah, he sure has. Look at him, the sweetness. The great Walter Payton. Once I, a bear, always a bear. I can remember trying to tackle him a few times, <laughs> and the emphasis on trying. <laughs> Third and 16. As Kramer's back in the game. Good news for Chicago. He's hit again. Fires incomplete. Intended for Ingram. But Kramer really feeling the pressure. I'll tell you, hats off to Foch Fazio's defense. I mean, he's really getting after these guys. Look at the hurries and the pressure. I mean, it's hard to conduct any kind of passing game when you have this coming at you. And there's two things that are happening. One, with that kind of pressure, Kramer's not having the time. And two, the receivers aren't cutting the route short enough to get open. Sauerbrunn, good hang time on this one. Amp lead with his own 20. He tries to get inside, now inside. Penalty mark to Crone. And Lee taken down at about the 37-yard line, but a flag on the play. Mike Lowry on the stop. 50-yard punt, 19-yard return. That's right in the area of holding, right? Well, those bodies were where they meet the wedge. That's usually what comes out of that. You know, those numbers on the defense, somebody will see tomorrow, zero sacks in the first half and say, oh, they didn't get any pass rush. That's where the numbers are very deceiving. You saw all the others with the knockdowns and the pressures and the interceptions. Illegal block in the back during the return return team 10-yard penalty first down the Kentuck is 19th year in the NFL retired guidance counselor for high school in St. Louis longtime veteran under a minute to play here in what has been a pretty wild first half Eric Kramer a couple of Interceptions also through his first TD pass of the season. And he's had his bell rung a few times, but came back out on the field after missing only one snap. 
Yeah, you saw him over there talking to Ingram. He's asking him for help. He says, hey, when you see those guys blitzing, you got to turn around and look at me. Fake reverse. Moon looks downfield. And let's see if he caught it in bounds. Yes, at the 33 yard line, Chris Carter once again tiptoeing along the sideline. 17 yard pickup. Yeah, I'll tell you, the one thing about Carter, I mean, well, first of all, Moon's out of the pocket, and you know he was uncomfortable with his injury, but watch Carter. Look at him. Catches it, keeps his feet in bounds. Knows exactly where he is on the field all the time. I mean, he makes tough routes and tough timing patterns and things like that. He makes those things look simple. And he stops the clock as he gets out of bounds. Moon to Jake Reed, and he gets out of bounds at the 47. Mark Carrier, the tackle, 15-yard gain. Talk so much about Moon, who said, as we said earlier, he was only 80% with the ankle sprain and the arch injury, and he looked a little shaky earlier. He's taking some hits, but he's also throwing some sharp passes. Oh, especially those last two. I mean, that's exactly what you want to do in two minutes. You know, work the sidelines, and he's putting the ball just where the receivers are the only people that can catch it. And the one big mistake, the interception, Wolford returned for a TD. Here comes the blitz. Incomplete, intended for Andrew Jordan, who's looking for a flag to be thrown somewhere. Yeah, well, well, they get out around midfield, and the Bears say, okay, that's enough. That, that's enough. We'll, we'll, we played cushion. You know, we're under two minutes. We'll sit back. They gave him the underneath stuff. They gave him some first downs. They got to midfield. They said, uh-uh. Then they bring the safety blitz. Harried the throw by Warren. He just threw it into the ground to get rid of it. Second down coming up. Here's your time remaining second quarter. Vikings at 2-0. Oh. Looking to go 3-0 oh for the first time in 21 years. Moon pump fakes. Now goes downfield. Incomplete. Chris Carter, the intended receiver. Harris and Carrier in the area. And that time, Walt Harris staying right with Carter. The Bears coverage to Harris and Carrier. We're going to see the rush up front. Watch John Theory right here. Okay, he gets he gets by Corey Stringer. Watch him come over the top. Now, he could hit Warren Moon right here. But see, he stops. He pulls up. See him? That's what should happen on the other end. Absolutely. Nice to see. Refreshing. Unfortunately, we say it's refreshing, but you know, it was respect for your elders. <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Big rush on Moon. Looks down. Ismail incomplete. Harris right there in the coverage. But Moon feeling the heat once again. And yeah, they brought the blitz again. You know, the Bears get around midfield and say no. And they brought both safeties on the blitz that time. Watch him come right up the middle. Here comes Marty Carter. Now watch, watch here. The carrier, too. See him coming the A-gaps? Now Moon throws that ball. He gets rid of it quick. Now he's got man-to-man -man coverage over there with Harris. If, he, if Moon had a little bit more time, he had an open receiver there in his mouth. So, Berger on. Vikings opponents have done well on returning through the first two-plus games. Ingram at his 13. Nowhere to go. Hit down at about the 21. Ben Hanks on the tackle. 37-yard punt. Eight-yard return for Ingram. So Chicago takes the field, and Dennis Green, in his fifth season, 47 years old, last year did not make the playoffs for the first time, has had his off-the-field distractions last couple of weeks. Yeah, he has. You know, he's been taking a lot of criticism, but... The thing about it is, no one's paying attention to what a great job coaching does. In 92, he's 11 and 5. Then look at look at the look at the schedule after that. Look at the records. And they're terrible, but that's because of the free agency. They've lost all those players, and Denny Green's been doing a good job with what he's had. Kramer complete. Timpson hit at the 30. And Bears screaming. They felt that Timpson was out of bounds, and Washington hit him after he was out. Fox stops with 22 seconds remaining. Chicago with two timeouts left. We know Foge has done a great job defensively for the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, they've created the turnovers, and this has been the same thing they've done the first two games. 
Now, on the other side of it, Chicago, their running game's been working. They need to use it more because they still don't have the passing problem wrinkles ironed out yet. Second and one, and flags all over. Several of the Vikings jumping off sides, whether or not they were drawn. Martin Harrison went across the line. Well, it's no time to use it right now with 22 seconds, but Kramer is one of the best offside. at drawing you off sides. Defense number 91, unabated path to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, first down. So it is Harrison. They get a free five yards without, without uh, taking any time off the clock. But the, he's real good at it over his career. I, I think last year alone, he had 16 times he was responsible just with his tone inflection of drawing guys off sides. And when you get a jumpy crew like Foge Fazio's crew up front yeah, right with John there. Randall, okay. Marvin Harrison, and Derek Alexander, I mean, they're the guys you want to use that on. That's the sixth penalty for Minnesota. Raymond Harris, the lone setback. They get the first down. Kramer looks downfield. Michael Timpson, the intended receiver. Dwayne Washington trying to track it down. And that was not a good pass. I'll tell you what, the secondary has done a pretty good job. They are young, so Dave Wanstead perhaps trying to take advantage a little bit. Wanstead said he couldn't wait for today's game to get here because he wanted to get the taste out of his mouth from the loss to the Redskins, 10-3 at RFK. Second and 10. Kramer, complete at the 40. And he can't get out of bounds. Ingram, the rookie, tried to, and they're going to call a timeout. He did his best to get out of bounds, but could not. And there are seven seconds remaining here in the first half. This, is a timeout. Now, this game's such an important game early in the season because Green Bay already 2-0 and, and looking so strong, looking certainly like the favorite in the division. Minnesota needing these wins early on the year. Chicago really can't afford a loss because, you know, still the number one goal is to win your division. Yeah, exactly. And this, for Chicago, that's their first division game. Interdivision game. I mean, they, they had started off with Dallas and Washington, and they're in a conference, but they're not in their division. And to take the step in the playoffs, the one thing you have to do is take control of your division. So it's real important for them to be at home and have to have a win here against the divisional team. You don't want to worry about wild cards and tiebreakers. Case in point, Chicago last year, the only winning team in the NFL not to make the playoffs. Exactly. That's why it's so important for them to get on track and get things going. But on the other side of the ball, for Minnesota, this is a, this is a, a game on the road for them against Chicago. You always want to try to win on the road in your division. If you can steal one early in the season, it's beneficial late in the season. And they go on the ground. Raymond Harris gets up to the 44. And they're trying to get a timeout. But the time expires unless they're going to say one second. They're saying one second, I believe. Timeout was requested so by it. the Bears with one second remaining on the clock. And it looked like they got this to the 44. Final timeout. That'd be a 61-yard field goal. So more than likely they'll try and throw a Hail Mary pass to end. Huerta doesn't look like he wants to attempt a 61-yard. Uh, yeah, I don't think so either. He doesn't need that. He's had his own problems with the 35, 38-yard field goal. And Wanstead's been on him. I mean, the pressure's on him. And he surely doesn't want to go out there and attempt a 61-yarder. Wanstead, one of his toughest decisions was getting rid of Kevin Butler. Where to taking over. Certainly money a factor in, in all decisions that the NFL coaches and general managers have to make. And Butler's still out there. And believe me, you know, somebody's going to pick him up. And it, I wouldn't surprise me if he was re-signed by the Bears. So they're going to throw it. A little Hail Mary on the 44-yard line. A second remaining here in the first half. Penalty marker on the play, so we'll have to wait and see if this is the last one. Kramer fires downfield. Corey Fuller almost intercepted it, but again, let's see if it's a defensive penalty. It is. We'll give you one more play. Fernando Smith, he's going to get another five yards, jumping in the neutral zone early. Offside. Defense number 91, five-yard penalty. By rule, we will have one. Yeah, you can't you can't end the half on a penalty. 
So by rule, they're going to have Correction, another the shot. The number was 90. By rule, we will have one untimed down. Derek Alexander. Yeah, there's Derek right there. He jumps into the neutral zone here on that voice inflection. See, see him draw? He gets in there, and, and they get a free play. There's no time on the clock. They're on a 40, and they're going to have another shot at the end zone. So barring a defensive penalty, this will be the final play of the first half. Kramer feeling some pressure. Raymond Harris has it. A wall of defenders ahead of him. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 23. And that will end the first half. Typical Bears Vikings game tied at 14 here in the first half. JB and Terry be along from the Fox Television Center with the Dockers Khakis halftime report following these messages. All even up at Soldier Field. Tonight at 7, 6 Central, how far would you go to win cash and prizes? Would you throw your own stuff off a 100-foot crane? Eric Kramer, and Kramer again through the two interceptions and, and really felt the heat throughout most of the first half. Yeah, he sure has. And I mean, and I said hats off to Foge Fazio to get this defense ready because you look at their defense on paper and they just don't jump out at you as a group that can come by and, and control a game like they have today. And they've been getting the pressure. We've, we've had it with Fernando Smith. We've had it with uh, Derek Alexander. These guys are making things happen. And it's been the pressure that has forced Kramer to been, be errant and his timing off. Bears at one and one. Very impressive in the first week right here at Soldier Field beating the Cowboys. This Pittsburgh kicks off. Vikings at two and oh. Jack Jackson's not going to go anywhere. And Chicago will start it off at their own 20. Some of the numbers from the first half. Both teams at times really rushing the ball extremely well. And Warren Moon also able to hook up with Jake Reed and Chris Carter quite a bit. Well, everything actually has been real substantially equal for both these teams. Look at the first downs, the total yard passing, everything's the same. Maybe the time possession goes to Vikings a little bit, but when you have equal numbers like that, look at the scoreboard. You have equal numbers there, too. Kramer rolling out. Fires downfield, incomplete. Tended for Michael Timpson. He took some heat again. Crowd perhaps wanting a late hit. Fernando Smith in pursuit. And we saw the numbers from the Bears running game. And again, Rashawn Salam not playing. They hope he plays next week. Yeah, that, that's the middle. That's what the, that's what the Bears are good at, are rushing the ball up the middle. And actually, I, I think they'd be better suited to do it a little more. This time, Robert Green up to, to maybe the 21. So once again, Chicago facing another third and long. Fernando Smith in on the stop. Well, I, I'll tell you, you know, I, we've heard a lot of talk about the passing game and its problems. But I believe the problem is that they're not running the ball as much as they should. I think they're putting too much emphasis on the fact that they had 3,800 yards last year passing and they can do it any time. But they forget how they got that passing. They need to run the ball. This is the black and blue division, guys. It's uh, three yards and a cloud of dust. That's what they need to do. Screen pass to Green. Green throw. Very close, but shy of the first down. Jeff Brady comes across and makes the hit. Time for another punt for Sauerbrunn. And they were close, and you, and you see what they did. They got the ball to the running back. I mean, it was a pass, yeah, but it was a screen. It wasn't the, It wasn't to the wide receivers. I mean, they're mixing it up with a running back. And Robert Green, real close right there to getting the first down. I like the way he scampers. Sauerbrunn, who had a horrible rookie season, but has really come bounced back in a big way. Mike got benched. Yep. A punter got benched. Have you ever heard of a punter getting benched? You're either cut or you stay out there. Ah. Lee at his own 27, scoots around. Lee tries to get outside. Now cuts inside and finally tackles at about the 41-yard line. Davis in on the stop. Hey, look at Sauerbrunn. I mean, yeah, he got benched last year. You know, they said he wasn't going to be any good. And then he comes back this year with a tattoo and earrings. And he's booming the ball and giving them field position. 46-yard pump that time. KFC. For everything a meal should be, everybody needs a little KFC. Minnesota first and 10 at their own 41 on the 16-yard return for Amp Lee. 
Robert Smith gets some room outside. And Smith up near midfield. Finally knocked out of bounds. Mark Carrier. Now, one thing the Bears situation in punting is he creates field position. I mean, this guy's been put. Look at the numbers. Only four returned out of 14 punts. Okay, and last year he was benched and he wasn't doing very good. His season stunk. As a football player, a lot of times your problem's all right there in your head. And for him it is. He went out and got a tattoo, then he got some earrings, okay? And, and now he has a new attitude, and he thinks he's good. And for punters and kickers, essentially, you need to have that. Last year, the first time that he really faced criticism from everyone, fans, media, coaching staff, Scotty Graham, with his first carry, gets up maybe a yard. And it's tough for a rookie, any way you look at it, and to face that criticism. The veterans even shaved his head, and let me tell you, it was not a quality haircut. <laughs> Well, so he dealt with a lot of different problems for the first time in his career. <laughs> well, Rasham Salam, the number one pick. See, he was late coming into camp. So Sauerbrunn was a second-round pick, so he's equally going to get the torture because the first-rounder's not there, and he's a second-round pick as a punter. So he really got They drug him around. They taped him up. I mean, yeah, it was great. No game on that last play. Third down and two. Charles Evans comes in at the fullback. Moon, quick drop, doesn't find the first receiver, then gets Evans out of the backfield. Good okay. for a first down for the Chicago 44. Joe Kane with the tackle. You see, they were, you see the first half, they, they tried to get the run more, and then now they come out and they started running the ball more, but they say they like to run, but like I told you, that's a lot of talk. That's talk coming out of Minnesota, and it's been that way ever since Dennis Green got there. They say, yeah, we want to run the ball. We got all these big offensive linemen, but they never do run the ball. And if they give it to Smith, he always puts out numbers. He's got their touchdown here. Lee, okay. maybe a yard. Not much more than that. Marty Carter with the tackle. Right now, McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown of the Fox Television Center. Philadelphia trying to close the gap with the front runner, Dallas. How are they doing it? Well, they're beating up on the Lions. Rodney Pete strike to Chris T. Jones. 17-3 Eagles, but the Lions are driving and threatening. Back to Mike Breen, Bill Moss. Yeah, Mike, the Lions still remember the butt kicking they took down there in December last year. Rodney's dad, Willie Pete, a coach here in Chicago, as Warren Moon looks downfield. Jake Reed, just a little bit too long. Wolford right there on the coverage, and that was very close to being six points. That was very close to being six points. As a matter of fact, I think Jake Reed underestimated the ball. I mean, Warren really laid it out for him, out there for him, not to break stride. And actually, that's the first time they've really tested it deep. You watch Jake Reed. See him come out here? And Warren Moon sees him all the way, and he wants to throw the ball so Jake doesn't have to break stride, but he slowed down there. He slowed down there as he's trying to measure the ball and where it's going to be, and that little, that little hesitation there cost him that. Already has a touchdown reception. Reed does. Third down and eight. Moon has some time. Complete out of the backfield to Amp Lee. Barry Minter, the first one to hit him. But well short of the first down. And Minnesota will punt. Now Mangum also in on the stop. So he kind of limps off, as does Warren Moon. So many questions about Moon's condition coming in. But he said he had an excellent week throwing the ball. He just felt uncomfortable with tape on his ankle. He never had that, never had to play with that. Well, now he gets to realize and feel what all the other guys have to do. All the other guys have to get taped up. As a quarterback, sometimes, you know, you're not getting banged around too much. Berger, good high kick. And Ingram calls for a fair catch. Fair catch right there at the 10. 23-yard punt. Yeah, that tape, that, that tape. Everybody wants to get taped up, even if your fingers are bleeding. Watson's numbers last week in Atlanta, the come-from-behind win for the Vikings. Now, how about this, Mike? He, he won the game. Look, he's telling the kid, give me the ball. Come on, give me the ball, kid. I, I need the ball. I, that's my best game ever as a pro. I won it. So then he steals it. <laughs> he stole the ball from the kid. Look at the kid's face. <laughs> and then he goes to the bench. After, after two weeks like that, bringing his team to victory, then he's on the bench. The young man just doing his job and not trying to give up the game ball. Kramer, Raymond Harris cannot hold on. Darrell Talley was right there ready to make a tackle anyway. 
That's one of the things the Bears usually do very, very well is get the ball to the fullback in the flat. And not only was he covered and Minnesota prepared for it, but the, the, the problems continue with the passing game. It was right on his fingertips and he drops it. So second and 10, still tied at 14. Robert Green hit hard. Robert Griffith greets him behind the line of scrimmage. Let's get an update on the Eagle Lion, Eagle Lion game from JB. He might tell Bill, here's a guy who asked for the ball and he knew what to do with it. Barry Sanders, only 39 yards so far, but a big eight yard run here. That draws him to within 17-10 of the Eagles in the third. Back to Mike Green and Bill Moss. Mike, Barry Sanders always knew what to do with the ball. <laughs> Number one in the NFL in rushing through the first two weeks. Robert Smith of the Vikings, second in rushing yardage. Kramer, a little pump fake, now goes, and it's complete. Conway with a first down up across the 30-yard line. 24-yard connection. Well, this, this is what they need to do. This is what they need to do, is they need to get him outside. They need to get him outside. He's been at the slot receiver position the last two weeks. Okay, did you see him? Now they put him back outside, and that's where he's most effective, is out by the boundary. Conway's second reception. And again, good for a first down. Robert Green, not a lot of room this time. And hit pretty much in the line of scrimmage. John Randall in on the tackle. Randall has been relatively quiet here this afternoon. Well, he has. You know what? John Randall is best. John Randall is actually best on turf. I mean, that's, that's where he, he gets to use all his quickness and explosive. If he has to play on the grass and, and get in that uh, wrestling match and on slow track with the big 300-pound offensive lineman, and then he's in trouble. He has not had a great start to the season, but Dennis Green predicted he'd have a big game today. That has not been the case just yet. Still plenty of time. Kramer throws. Timpson, nice, strong catch near a first down. Wayne Washington right in his face, but Timpson able to hold on in an 11-yard pickup. Nice job coming back to the ball by Timpson there. And Dwayne Washington was all over and made a nice play on the ball. It was a strength in the hands there. That's a first down. And that's a strength in the hands there of Timpson coming back to the ball and grabbing that thing. I'm seeing a little spark here now on the outside position of the wide receivers for the Bears. They need Conway and Timpson to get in sync with Kramer. Hasn't been the case for the first couple of games. Kramer going long. And again, not a smart pass. Poorly thrown. Dwayne Washington trying to track it down. Timpson, the intended receiver. Well, I'll tell you, yeah, you really have to sit there and wonder what the heck's going on with Eric Kramer and his thoughts. You take a look at the all-22 shot here. Watch the man-to-man -man coverage on both wide receivers. Okay, now Eric has time, and he can take a look at both of them, and then he overthrows that one when he has the receiver clearly inside on the cornerback. Bad throw that time. Fazio has to be pleased with his Viking defense thus far, though he's not happy with the lack of tackling that they've had this year. His flags thrown all over the field. Particularly tackling the running backs, he said. He said they, the defensive secondary has done a pretty good job of tackling the receivers yards after catch, keeping them minimized, but it's been the running back and the running game that he's been displeased start. with the tackling. Offense, number 63, prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, second down. So a second and long coming up. Second and 15 coming up. Ryan Cox looking calm for a change. He's going to drink his water this time. Raymond Harris, the lone setback on second and 15. Quick throw, Conway's got it, cuts in one way. Tries to go around Thomas, and he's got the first down. The second effort from Curtis Conway, 17-yard pickup. Well, that's exactly what they've done. They've made the switch. See, they've got Conway out at the boundaries. That's where he needs to be. That's where he feels best. He uses his speed. Watch him come back to the ball. See the move? See the move he puts on Corey Fuller? 
and heads back out to his comfort zone, which is the sidelines. Let him get out there and use his speed. Great job by the coaching staff in recognizing, saying, hey, yeah, we made a mistake. We had Curtis as the slot receiver. Let's get him outside. Let's get him outside and use his speed the way we used him last year. And Fuller shaking up on the play. He'll come out. Fuller has been a little bit banged up. Didn't start last week because of a groin injury. Alfred Jackson comes in for him now. Very physical afternoon at Soldier Field. Still tied at 14. As you see, a little over seven minutes remaining in the third. And Kramer has to like that because they're not very deep. I'm talking about Minnesota in their secondary. I mean, Corey Fuller's done a great job for him out there. Now he goes down and Jackson has to come in. Let's see what they do here. Mike Falkerson in motion there at the fullback. Hand off Harris. And fumble the ball. Ball is loose. Bears look like they've recovered. Todd Berger pounces on it. Second time a Bears running back has fumbled, and the second time they've recovered their own fumble. Yeah, Berger, Berger's really been keeping busy. Remember, he was a guy that was trapping downfield. Well, they got him trapping again. This time they pulled both guards out, and he leads up there, but Brady gets to jump on him. And then, you see, he's turned around, and he sees the ball. Right, see him? He stays right with it. Now, Berger's been a key for him in here. They got the running game going with him early in the first quarter with the draft. Rushing the ball down there, and it was it was his trap that sprung the uh, the big touchdown. Loss of six. Second down. And long once again for Chicago. Kramer, quick throw to Green. And Green down to the 37-yard line. Dixon Edwards, the former Cowboy, on the stop with a 12-yard gain. And, that, and that's, that, see that play there? You get the back out. Into, the, into that little hook area right there. That's been a nice play for Chicago. And what it's really doing is it's taking, you're going to see right, see him come in motion, then he comes right down there. And, and what that's really doing is it's opening things up outside. He runs so low to the ground, Green, very difficult to tackle. I like the guy. I really like him as a runner. You know, they say he's not in every down back. I sure give him a shot. Third and four, Kramer knocked down, and there's John Randall, who's been quiet all afternoon, and gets his second sack of the season. Well, that's the explosiveness and the penetration that you hear so much about when they talk about John Randall. And that's what he does best. In a tight area down here in the middle, he can blow through the gaps. See him come right over Berger. He gets low and underneath him and just pries him open with the rip move, and he's right there in Kramer's lap. And more fighting once again. Fernando Smith and Big Cat Williams. There's been a lot of that. And that's the type of thing, a close game. You want to get those flags, you don't want to get anyone ejected. You got to start thinking about the team and not start about trying to get too macho out there. I'll be honest with you, I think the referees, the officials, his staff, I mean, they're letting these guys play. I mean, there could have been a number of times where they could have thrown flags over on the sidelines and things have been occurring. I mean, they, they've, let, they've let them play. Cox not involved. Sauerbrunn once again on. Amp Lee is back. Fair catch at his own nine. So Sauerbrunn once again does the job. 36 yards, but no return. Still tied at 14 here in the third. Between the tackles, one of the best between the tackles is John Randall, and he exemplifies energy. Look, he's going all the time. He uses his quickness, his explosiveness, coming off the ball, creating havoc, shooting gaps. He never stops moving his feet. This guy, watch right here on Aaron Taylor against the Packers. He's rushing, he gets knocked down to the ground, and then he comes out and he chases Brett all the way down the sidelines until he tries to drag him down. I mean, that's effort. He's going all the time. He has a motor. Man on first down, Warren Moon on a quick out. As you see Randall resting. Chris Carter with a seven-yard reception, so a second and three coming up for Minnesota. You know, we're talking about John, and one of the things, although he has all those sacks and all those numbers he's put up over the years, and he's right up with, with the best of them. He has a trouble on grass. He only has three and a half sacks over the last two years on grass fields. Here's a guy that racks up the sacks everywhere else. Second and three. Robert Smith. Walt Harris trips him up. But good for a first down. Harris with his 10th tackle 
of the afternoon. He's busy. He's busy. Sure. I mean, they're going to test him. They're going to test this guy for a long time to come. Anytime you put a rookie at the cornerback position, you're going to get tested. I mean, it's only the third week of the season. So if he plays good the first week or two, it doesn't stop teams from testing him. They're going to come at him because he's a rookie. A lot of predictions here in Chicago that Walt Harris will be a Pro Bowler very soon. Dave Wanstead says it's his best secondary he's ever had. Moon fires, and it's caught. Ishmael on the out again. He has been very effective. <laughs> he loves that route. So much concern on Carter and Reed, but Ishmael has done an excellent job this afternoon. 14-yard pickup, and Ishmael now with five receptions. But sometimes you get so locked into defensively taking care of the guys that make big plays for him. I mean, you, you overshadow. You don't. You don't. You really don't concentrate on other guys that can be equally as effective. And right here, they're getting to smell the ball, and he is being as effective. He only had two receptions in the first two weeks from five today. Robert Smith has some room to run, and Smith's got the first down and more approaching midfield, and tackled right at the 50. 15-yard pickup. Tackled by Carrier. Mark Carrier in on the stop. Watch these two guys right here, McDaniels and Stuzzi. These two guys are the reason this whole thing springs. See the drop step they take, and then they just wall off the defense. And then Smith is just out the gate. And the first person he runs into are defensive backs. Great job up front by the big guys. And then tight end to Walt out there. And Carter, look at Carter down. Do you see Carter and Reed? When you get your wide receivers mixed up in the blocking, you get big chunks of yardage in your running game. Robert Smith, just shy of midfield, gets the handoff and run out of bounds. James Burton, who just came in for Wolford, runs him out. Smith with 78 yards rushing on 16 carries. By Burton and Vincent Smith. New game, second and 10. So a second and 10 coming up. 30 carries, the career high last week. Dennis Green said, no way. But you never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there's still plenty of time left, and he's got 17 now. And a terrific touchdown run in the first half. Amp Lee. A long setback, Andrew Jordan. Lee gets it. Jordan with a good block. Lee, not a lot of room, but does get it to midfield. Barry Minter on the tackle. Tackle by Minter and Chris Menace. Well, they strung that play out all the way to the sidelines, but what we created again was Flanagan. Flanagan, watch the penetration by Jim Flanagan get past Jerick and make this thing bounce outside. When you get penetration like this, Sam, you just crunch the guard down and crinkle him up like an old aluminum poke can. Yeah, well, that's going to make the play bounce outside. And that's what you want to do. You string the run outside, then you get everybody up there supporting. Third down and seven. The Bear fans getting loud. Moon fires incomplete. Harris right there on the coverage. Great coverage. Great coverage all the way around for the Chicago Bears. Uh, Wolford taken out a couple of plays ago. He had a touchdown in the first half on an interception return, but they're icing up that left knee, apparently. Yeah, they've had James Burton in there the last couple times, taking his place. He was bothered by a leg injury during the preseason. Of course, had that hip injury kept him out second part of last year. And they're keeping their defense out. This is punch safe. Ingram is back once again. Berger, good high kick. And another fair catch at the 16. That's where Chicago will take over. Just over a minute and a half remaining in the third. 31-yard punt, no return. We're still tied. Three hot rookies, Eddie George of the Oilers, Winslow Oliver of the Carolina Panthers. Each week, Degree will be tracking this year's hot rookies. And some pretty solid performances from a rookie today for Chicago. No rookies there with Moon and Carter. I don't know if Warren Moon can remember his rookie year. <laughs> but Bobby Ingram of Chicago got a touchdown pass. Those guys... They work so hard and practice together. Moon says one of the reasons he loves Carter is because he practices so hard, you get a feel for what he's going to do in the game. It reminded him of Drew Hill, the way he works so hard. He said he and Hill, Carter and Hill, work the hardest of anybody he's ever been around. Kramer hands off Green. Huge hole. Robert Green still going up to the 35-yard line. Orlando Thomas finally brings him down. 
I told you. Mike, I hate to say I told you so to you. But I would give this guy the ball every down. I'd make him prove to me he can't run it every down. Watch the block here and watch the lead by Raymond Harris that opens this thing up. Boom. And then Green, I mean, he has great vision. And he gets into the hole so quick with his low center body gravity. I mean, he's down there. He can make his cut. and He sees something instinctively. Bang, his body's over there. Undrafted out of college of William & Mary. He played with Joe Gibbs' son. That's why Gibbs was aware of him. And he drafted him in Washington. Reverse. Conway has plenty of room. And Conway gets another first down. Dixon Edwards brings him down. 12-yard game. Well, when you pound the ball at them and then you fake the run, they're thinking they're going to pound it again. But watch Conway up here come around, and Kramer does an excellent job of faking the handoff. And then you get Fontenot, who swings out here and gets a block downfield. I mean, th th that's good stuff by the Bears' offensive uh, philosophies. I mean, Ron Turner's doing a good job setting these things up and keeping Minnesota off balance. Under a half minute remaining, third quarter. Bears on the move. Kramer, quick throw. Timpson has it. And they are in Minnesota territory. Washington knocks him out of bounds. Again, good play calling, Mike. You know, first they that big power, boom, with the run. Then they come with a trick play, and now it's a little out. They'll take that stuff to a flat. Heck, that's four yards. Kramer hasn't been all that accurate when he's been throwing downfield, but his short passes have been extremely accurate throughout the afternoon. They've done a great job. I mean, outside in the flat area. I mean, he puts the ball right there for him. Now, remember, they've had they've had the ball dropped a couple times. That's going to be it for the third quarter. Kramer, though, did through two interceptions. One of them led to a Minnesota touchdown of the first half, with the score still tied at 14 after three. Afternoon at Soldier Field in Chicago, NFC Central battle. Game tied at 14. And yes, on Friday, plans perhaps for a retractable dome here at Soldier Field. Mayor Richard Daly talking about the plans. Long way to go before it comes to fruition. As Kramer rolls, fires, incomplete. Timpson had it and lost it. And Timpson looks shaken up on the play. Corey Fuller coming over to show a little support. There it is, right there. Fuller hitting him on the foot, and that kind of jammed the knee a little bit. So uh, Timpson is attended to on the field. We'll take time out. Opening seconds of the fourth quarter. We're all tied. Taking off the field, but shaking up on that last play. Dropped the ball, and you can see Corey Fuller coming in, and Timpson jammed his knee. Well, he gets it twisted up there a little bit, but I'm telling you, Mike, nothing hurts more than the fact that he dropped that ball, and he should have caught it. Third and five. Chicago just in Minnesota territory. Green breaks a tackle and looks just shy of the first down. Har Barnett comes up to make the stop. And for Foch Fazio's defense, I mean, these guys are doing a heck of a job out there. We got an injured player. Is that crazy? No. We have an injury out in the field right now. Raymond Harris. I'll get back now. to that thought in a second about their defense. It has been a very physical game. So Harris is down and shaken up. Timpson still being worked on on the sidelines. Kramer, remember, in the first half, got hit really hard, had to come out for a play. Getting back to that thought I was, I was telling you about, you know, we're saying it's a physical game, and these guys are playing physical. You know, for Foch Fazio, his defense has had to deal with playing two run-and-shoot teams. Opening the season, playing two run-and-shoot teams is tough. What you get into is a basketball game style defense where you have to actually run all over the field in like a zone defense it's like you're playing basketball. Man up with a guy and stay with him. And that's what these guys have had to do for the first two weeks. Now you have to come back and put your base defense in. 
and that is you bring in Darrell Talley. He's been inactive for the uh, last first two weeks, and he has to come back in as strong linebacker. And the guys have to play gap control, smash mouth, stop the run defense against the Bears, and that's tough for a team to do when you spent the last three weeks doing this other stuff. Harris still down. So right now, McDonald's game break. Let's return to JB at the Fox Television Center. Mike and Bill, take a look at this Eagles play. Third and 29. Rodney Pete goes to Chris T. Jones. Great catch. Look at the stiff arm here. Tight ropes along the left sidelines. They say it didn't make it in, but it set up the quarterback sneak. For Rodney Pete, Philadelphia on top, 24-10 in the fourth. Back to Chicago, Mike and Bill. Thank you, James. I know Wolford, who returned an interception for a touchdown in the first half, he's been out for quite a while as they ice up his knee. Timpson went off a couple of minutes ago. And now Raymond Harris. Oh, 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 oh. I saw that. They're checking that knee and checking the stability of it. And it didn't look very stable right there. I know because I've, I've had that injury before. And I know when they come out and check that. And I saw by the wiggle of it, it's not a good sign. And that's going to be a heck of a loss for him. You know, Salam's been out. And, and now Raymond Harris, you know, they lost him last year for a long period of time because he had a broken collarbone in his first game. And he was out for the entire season. And it was really, they wanted to get him back because he's so effective out in the flat, throwing the ball to him. So that's going to be a blow. And, you know, and Timpson takes a shot. He's on the sidelines. And Eric Kramer's been getting whacked around, too. I mean, they, they got to be careful. Well, you really have to feel for Harris, who was a very talented running back. And as you mentioned, it was the second offensive play of the season last year. Rashawn Salon came in, and, and even Harris said, as you see Salon, they hope he's going to be back next week. He's got a knee and a hamstring problem. But Harris was saying, hey, everybody forgot me because Salam had such a terrific year. And he started off, had that great opening week, caught over 100 yards in the victory over the Cowboys. Yeah, and they bring out the lineman, you know, to help him out off the field because he was walking so gingerly he couldn't put any weight on it. You see, he has his right foot up in the air, and the guys are just carrying him off. That's a real shame, too, because uh, this is the third game this year. And, and it looks like he's going to be out for a period of time. And last year in his second game, he broke his collarbone and missed the whole season. So uh, for Raymond Harris, it, it, it's been a tough start so far early in his career. Mike Falkerson will come in at the fullback. Fourth and one, and Chicago will go for it. Conway in motion. Kramer trying to draw them off sides. Try to draw them off. They're going to take the five-yard penalty, let the clock run down, and go back and punt it. So the attempt to draw them doesn't. Crowd a little disappointed. They were open for them to go for that first down. You know, Dave wants that. You can see the disgust. I mean, he thought he knew it was going to be a physical game out here today. But he didn't know he was going to sustain the, these injuries he's been accruing. I mean, he's got three or four guys who have been rattled around. Remember, Kramer had to come out. They put Craig in there because he got knocked silly. They got Wolford, Timpson, and Harris. And, you know, that's quite a blow. Certainly injury is part of the game, but kind of piling up on Chicago here this afternoon as Amp Lee is back. Sauerbrunn set to punt again. He has had just another terrific afternoon. Lee has it at the 11, calls for the fair catch. And that's where Minnesota will take over. 38-yard punt, and once again, no return. Minnesota to take over. We're tied at 14 early in the fourth. With Fox NFL Sunday and Foot Locker, the winning drive to the Super Bowl number is 27720. Congratulations from Fox NFL Sunday and Foot Locker. Foot Locker, where it all begins. Raymond Harris with a sprained knee will not return. That's the early diagnosis. Michael Timpson also with a sprained knee. Doubtful to return. Vikings have it first down. Moon rolls out. Looks down. Oh. Fires incomplete. Carter wanting a interference on that James Burton with some good coverage take a look at the right of your screen there's Raymond Harris and watch Dixon 59 now that's green being tackled the ball carrier and watch him roll up on the 
back of Raymond Harris's legs as he was blocking. You see his leg, leg get twisted up there. Second and ten. Three wide receivers. Carter and Reed split to the near side. Amp Lee broke a couple of tackles and gets up to the 19. As we approach two and a half minutes gone by, actually just a little over a minute and a half gone by here in the fourth quarter. Really been a defensive struggle since the end of the second quarter. No scoring at all in the second half. That was our halftime score, the 14-14 time. You know, you know, Danell Wolford's interception return, and then the other defensive play by Minnesota, the, deep, the interception down there, and it got their offense in position to score. But it's really been a defensive game since the second quarter. And offense is what made these teams click in 95. Third and two. Moon. And Blue has it. And Lee hit. Close to the first down, Kevin Minifield with a good, strong tackle. Let's see where they mark it. That's strong defense. That's exactly what you want out of Kevin, Kevin Minifield right there. I mean, sure, hey, give him the pass. I mean, the coverage was so tight. They gave him, they gave him the catch, and then Minifield right there to stop. Ampli trying to get to the first down, but Minifield all over him and won't allow it. So fourth down coming up. So Mitch Berger back on the field. In the field, excellent work. As Ingram will go back to receive once again, he stands at his own 35. And some whistles blown on the snap. Delay a game, it will be. And, and that was by mistake. Now, sometimes you, you want to do that and sit out there with your punt team and take the delay of game so you can get better field position. But that's not the case here. That's going to delay. back them up and give Chicago Offense, field position. Five yards. Still fourth down. Eighth penalty of the game for the Vikings. Danny Abramowitz, the special teams coach for the Chicago Bears. So Berger back at the one to punt. Ingram moves up to his own 40. Berger, very short kick. Ingram, a fair catch in Minnesota territory. At the Viking 47. Just a 32-yard punt, no return. But Chicago with excellent field position. Hey, on Fox NFL Sunday, the 49ers take on the Panthers. Plus, the Super Bowl Jet Cowboys battle the Buffalo Bills. It all begins noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Tie game of the fourth quarter in Chicago with some great field position. Look at who wants that. Talking to Kramer as he's coming out there. And he knows this is it. Come on. This is it. Let's go. I mean, we got the field position here. We got what we wanted. Our defense held him. The punt. And now we get the ball at the 46 and a half yard line. Let's take it in. Falkerson and Green are the setbacks. Game tied at 14. Kramer to throw on first down. Fires complete. Wet night the tight end. Close to a first down. Daryl Talley on the tackle. But hey, what, what's that? Yeah, that's about the first time they've got the tight end involved. Not this game, but how about since the season started for him? And you see what Eric Kramer did there? He was looking at his primary receiver, Conway, outside. But he wasn't there. And at the last second, he finally looked off and saw Wet Knight standing in the middle of the field open. Great decision. Great patience by Kramer. Second and one. Green has it. And hit and knocked for a loss. Flag thrown on the play. Robert Griffith comes right up and hits him at the line of scrimmage. But again, a penalty marker. And that really hurts. Yeah, that does. Oh, right, let's see if it's a five or a 15 yarder. If it's a 15 yard face mask, that's really going to take him back. And that's going to be on Daryl Talley on the tackle. Talley trying to plead his case, but also saying, my fault. Face mask, five yards. Foul and dead ball spot. We're both behind the line of scrimmage. We will penalize from the dead ball spot, five yards, first down. That was just a lunge out there, and that was the first thing Daryl grabbed was his face mask. He took it off quick. You see why it was only a five-yard penalty instead of a 15-yard penalty, because it was only there momentarily. 
But, I mean, that's the ability of, of Green. I mean, the way he cuts. I mean, sometimes he's there, and you reach, and he's not there. And all you have is a face mask. Tally, who missed the first games of his NFL career, and this is his 14th year in the league at 221 consecutive games played, but missed the first two with the Vikings because of a sprained knee. The first two games he's missed since he was a junior in high school, Mike. Unbelievable. That's phenomenal. So now they're deciding on exactly where to put the football. They place it at the 32. But again, a first down. Green has it. Cuts inside. Almost broke a tackle, but taken down at the 30. Jeff Brady with the stop. Well, remember I was ta talking about Green? I mean, his ability to cut. I mean, his low center gravity down low. Watch. He gets the line of scrimmage. There's nothing there. Watch him start booing. Boing. There he is. I mean, he picks up a couple yards, but he's almost out of all that traffic the way he just slashes out there. I'm telling you, they say he's not in every down back. He'd have to prove it to me. I'd give him the ball every time. Career high, 106 yards last week against the Redskins. Second and eight. Kramer looks, fires. Almost picked off. Dwayne Washington nearly had it intended for Conway. Kramer's already thrown wow. a pair of interceptions. That almost the third. Dwayne Washington wishes he had another shot at that. Watch to the right of your screen. It's going to come into play. Kramer sets up, and he sees Conway outside. But what he doesn't see is the way Dwayne Washington got turned around in his route. See, Kramer saw an open Conway for about a second, but what he didn't see is Dwayne Washington getting turned around. And as he made his full circle, he was right there in front of the ball. Vikings lead the NFL already seven interceptions in two-plus games. Third and eight, Kramer throws. Wet Knight has it, but way shy of the first down as Kramer got hit again. And, and Mike, what did, what did they end up right there again? Third and eight. Exactly what Wanstad has talked about. Exact thing that has been killing this offense since week one. There it is. Week one, you can see how many times they got in that situation. And that's where they were one of seven when they're third and eight. I mean, you can't get to create that situation for this offense and expect it to succeed. We're at the, a 44 yarder. This would be his NFL long. This is his first year playing in the league. No good. It was blocked by the goalpost. Third miss of the season for Huerta, who hears it from the fans. He's now four of seven on the year. And great field position. They come away absolutely empty. Well, he has the leg strength. And see the trajectory? He's lucky it wasn't blocked right there. But their leg strength is there, but he didn't have the height. But then it hits the field goal, the goalpost. Still tied at 14, still early in the fourth. Here by Chicago Bears. Watch the low trajectory and watch Derek Alexander right there. See his fingers just barely touched the ball. That could have been the little thing that deflected it and just caused it to go off course there and hit the goalpost. Where it's his 44 yard attempt, no good. In the great field position, no points. Game still tied as Robert Smith. Backs up to about the 36, and after the miss, the fans here at Soldier Field were chanting Butler. Kevin Butler, the longtime Bear, who was cut in favor of Huerta. Well, don't be surprised if Kevin Butler wasn't in the stands leading that year. <laughs> I mean, he has a good gripe. I mean, heck. I mean, here's a guy, he's done it for years for the Bears. I mean, he's won overtime games for him, get last second game winning kicks. I mean, and they cut him and replaced with Huerta, and Huerta's missed three now. You get the feeling from comments that his job is in a little bit of jeopardy. Second and eight. Again, they hand off. And again, not a lot of room for Robert Smith. Come from different worlds to pursue the same dream. This is the story of what it takes to fight the pressure, face the pain, and survive the program. James Conn stars in the program on Fox tonight at 8, 7 Central. Here in Chicago, just under nine and a half to play in the fourth. We're still scoreless in the second half. 
Game tied at 14 and a third and seven coming up for Warren Moon. As Robert Smith walks off slowly. The injury bug has been his problem. A very talented running back, but he's really been nicked up. Grabbing his hamstring. Of course, Chicago has been wow. banged up. Sprained knee for Timpson. Sprained knee for Harris. Harris is done for the day. Wolford with a calf injury. Tony Carter hurt his hamstring. Third and seven. Amp Lee goes in motion. Moon, quick drop. Deflected. James Burton, one of those with a hit. And a late flag comes in. And the Bears are hopping mad. And that's Burton, and, and he's the guy in for the injured Wolford. Kevin Minifield also in there on, on the coverage. And we'll get the word from Dick Hantak. And Burton's upset. Mostly special teams of Burton who's in his third year out of Fresno State, but because of the injury to Wolford, playing a little more this afternoon. And if that's going to be a first down, that's going to be a critical first down. And nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter tie game, and you have them stopped. A and have the opportunity to get good your offense good field position again. You don't want to give Warren Moon too many chances, that's for sure. Still the discussion continues. Crowded over there. Pass interference. Defense number 24. They call it a minifield. So minifield call for the interference and a first down from Minnesota. Very big call. We take a look up top here. Minifield has a coverage here. And you see the drill in the back. He comes in and hits Rocket Ismail before the ball gets there. It looked like absolutely before, so a good call apparently. Wanstead, little concern. Vikings near midfield. Fifth penalty for Chicago. Scotty Graham's in the backfield now for Minnesota. Moon on a play fake. Simpson chases him out, and he throws it away. Carl Simpson with some excellent pressure. And he's walking a little gingerly. You saw Moon there. Hey, you know what you're talking about? It you know, goes back to Minnesota's run game. Remember I said they had success running, but they don't run it enough. And there they try to play action pass. And what the play action pass is designed to do is to suck up the safeties, get them up here to support the run. But they're not respecting the run because they haven't run. See the play action there? And so they stay in coverage. And now Warren Moon has to hold on to the ball longer. Robert Smith has still not returned after hobbling off from Minnesota. Moon looking downfield. Jake Reed can't get it. Burton with some excellent coverage that time. And third and ten coming up for the Vikings. I'll tell you, Jake Reed had Burton beat. And Warren Moon threw a nice ball. It was it's, it's a tough catch. It's going to be over the shoulder catch. He has to look back. See, he looks that way. Now watch him come all the way around, and he can't get his body to turn around over there because Warren Moon threw it to the sidelines. He just couldn't get turned around quick enough. As he looked at the ball, it was already in the air. Smith still out, knowing a tendon to him, so apparently, or at least it looks right now that he's okay, but he's not on the field. Moon goes into the shotgun on third and ten. Bears showing blitz. Here they come. Moon fires downfield. Carter's got it. Carter still running and taken down at the 22. First down, Minnesota. Carter signals it himself a 30-yard pickup. Well, Mike, you said it. You said it on the penalty. You said you don't want to give Warren Moon too many chances. And that's exactly the deal because he's going to find a way. He reads the blitz early, gets a pre-snap read, and then he finds Carter who settles down here behind Harris and in front of Carrier. When you give two guys like that who have been in situations like this before a little bit of an understanding of what's coming, and they're going to utilize it. And that catch for Chris Carter makes him the all-time leading receiver 
in Viking history as he passes Steve Jordan for most receptions with his fifth catch of the day. Most receptions in Viking history. This all from a guy who was cut in Philadelphia. A little tired after that one, but a first down ball all the way down to the Chicago 22. It was a great adjustment in his route when he saw the blitz, and it was also a great read by Warren Moon. Two tight ends in the game. Scotty Graham Malone setback. Moon, quick pass. Reed cannot hold on. Harris right there behind him. Jake Reed should have had that one. Second down coming up. Well, one thing about the Bears is they've had this pin but don't break defensive attitude. You know, they've made Minnesota punt three times today in Chicago territory, Mike. And you're looking at it, and now it's second down. I mean, if that's what they'd like to have here. I mean, move them back. See if they can get some pressure on the quarterback this time. Anything, but they don't want him to score. They've come up with a big play when they've needed it. Jordan goes in motion. Second and ten. Boom. And Lee with the handoff. And Lee gets down to the 15, 16 yard line, seven yard pickup. So a third and short coming up from Minnesota. Mark what, Carrier on the tackle. What you do is you create nickel situation, and they bring their nickel package in. Watch Minter, number 92 here. They get the nickel personnel in there. Now, what do they do? They run the ball. And watch Corey Stringer come down and nail Minter. Watch this block. Boom. Just knocks him off course. And that opens it up for Amp Lee. Third down and three. Carter in motion. Boom to throw under pressure. Fires incomplete. Intended for Chris Carter. Burton all over him. And they get involved in a scuffle. Warren Moon, though, feeling the pressure once again. I'll tell you, they came at him that time. I mean, that, that's the Bears' defense. I mean, they're tough down there. There's third down, and they get... They get in there, and they, they, they're blitzing. They said, heck, we're going for it. Look at them all coming up the middle. And then Spellman gets a free rush to the quarterback. Warren Moon just wants to get rid of that ball. He doesn't have time to play on his feet. He's backpedaling. He heaves that thing, and it's a bad throw. Look at his jersey wrinkle. It's Oon. <laughs> so the 33-yard attempt for Scott Sisson. There you see his numbers this year. He missed a 43-yarder. And Sisson puts it through. Sisson now 8 for 8 in his career in the fourth quarter. He's yet to miss a field goal attempt in the fourth quarter. Defense stops him from six points, but Minnesota takes the lead. Just under seven and a half remaining. Fourth quarter from Chicago. Vikings with the lead. The Central Division. Then you got Dallas and Buffalo. That's going to be unbelievable. And then you see the one down the bottom in San Francisco, Carolina. That's going to be a great game down in Charlotte. So the Bears down by three. First down, Kramer to throw. He's hit. And they'll call it an incomplete. Falkerson right there. Randall putting on some pressure in the backfield. Yeah, John Randall just threw the rip, rip right underneath Perry's shoulder and just came right up field. And what he did was, he, as Kramer was throwing the ball, just grabbed his arm. Watch the rip. Watch him use it. Watch him open this thing up. I mean, Randall, I mean, he's just unbelievable. He's going to come into your picture right there and grab it. See that? This time, the handoff behind the line of scrimmage hit once again. Green unable to go anywhere. Corey Fuller and Daryl Talley on the tackle. And, and, and look, Mike, man, I, don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I mean, hey, it's third and ten again. Well, you asked Dave once said yesterday, what's his biggest concern? And that's what he, he said, said, third and long. Yeah, he says, it's killing me. It's killing my offense. And it's not something that they practice all the time. You don't practice the third and 11, third and 12. That's what he says. And they get a lot of practice in the game on it. Third down and 10. Kramer under pressure again. Green has it and dropped it. Hit right away. Alexander right there to hit. And Green a little slow to get up. Fourth down. And the punting unit coming on once again. Crowd getting a little restless here at Soldier Field. Oh, watch what you do here. You, you take Alexander right here, and you make a move, and then drop him back into coverage. Watch this. He makes his contact, then he drops back out and sits down and picks up the back. 
and they try to get it to Green, and Alexander's right there to make the play. Todd Sauerbrunn. Another beautiful long kick. And Blue at the 20. Gets a couple of nice blocks. Cuts inside. And good return for Amp Lee up to the 37-yard line. 18-yard return. Sauerbrunn, another 60-yard punt. And Minnesota leading by three with 6.15 will take over with pretty decent field position. Vikings have been in this position before week one. At home, down 13-10 to Detroit less than two minutes ago. Brad Johnson finally Chris Carter, 31-yard strike. Minnesota wins this one, 17-13. In week two, they take it on the road. Down to Atlanta, 17-13 in the fourth quarter. Forced fumble and a touchdown from Johnson to Frisch, and they win again. Scotty Graham with the carry on first down. But Brad Johnson is on the sidelines. He gets the NFC Offensive Player of the Week, and he's rewarded by saying, go to the bench. Well, something you have to do that. I mean, he, had, he did what he's supposed to do. I mean, he came in and he did a fine job backing up and he led his team to victory as a backup. That's what backups are supposed to do. Well, when Mar Moon's ready to go, he has to be out there. They were kidding Johnson if he wants a big contract. He didn't have to play anymore this year. That's the key. Hey, two good games, keep him on the bench the rest of the season. He'll get a bank load at the end. Second and five. Moon again, the handoff. Graham rumbles up to about the 45-yard line. Again, Robert Smith... Walked off the field, holding his right leg earlier, has not returned since then, and Graham's starting to get some carries. Smith's still sitting on the bench. Smith fumbled the ball twice last week. One of them he recovered, the other lost. And here's somebody who only fumbled once in his entire career prior to last week. But a big third and three coming up. Coming up on five minutes remaining, Vikings lead at 17-14. DeLong goes in motion. Moon has time. He's got Jake Reed. But it doesn't look like he's got the first down. Depends on where they mark it. But now the way the official is, they may have it. Walt Harris with the tackle. Let's see where they mark it. That's going to be close. It appears to be first down. Yeah. All in the spot. His, they're going to say his forward progress where he caught the ball was beyond the first down marker. They're calling in for the change for measurement now. Tell you what, that's where Jake Reed is one step. A little anxious right now. It's where a veteran receiver knows where the first down marker is, goes to that spot. Well, the problem is what happens, though, is the official measurement of the change is on the opposite side of the field. So the guys over here, actually, they just use their eye, and they come out and line it up. They say, oh, this looks good, and they put it there. And, but in a play like this, when the receiver's looking for the first down marker, he looks at the sidelines, he looks, he stretches out and tries to get it, and it's not necessarily, when it comes down to a matter of inches, it may not, might not be the exact first down. The exact measurement is on the far side of the field where the chains are. That's why they brought them all the way in from over there. And they're short. First down. They got it. Yep. They got it. So the drive continues. Wanstead not happy, obviously, with the spot. Oh, it was a questionable call. I mean, here's, here's the marker. Okay, and here's the receiver, but he's going to come back to make the catch. Let's see how far back he comes to make the catch. I, he's up in the air. I don't, I don't know. That's real close. That's a judgment call. Now, it's tough to tell on that angle, but by the way his feet's up in the air and push forward, uh, they might have been a very charitable spot, shall we say. And plead the lone setback. It's first and ten. And Warren Moon didn't like something, so he's got to call a timeout. Minnesota takes their first timeout here in the second half. Dennis Green. The Chicago Bears have the best in communications here in Soldier Field. That's why the Bears use NEC business. Again, he's seen his team come back from deficits in the fourth quarter before. We showed you week one of the victory over the Lions. Maybe more impressive was last week. They did it on the road. And a very tough place to play, down 17-13 to Atlanta, early in the fourth. Jeff Brady and Harlan Barnett forced that fumble at the Falcon 34. Johnson works his magic again. David Frisch catches it, 20-17 lead. They win it 23-17. And a 2-0 start for the Vikings. If they win today, it'd be their best start in 21 years.
And, and it's been the defense and, and Sisson, the kicker, that's really been there for him. I mean, Brad Johnson did a nice job, but the defense has given them the situations and turnovers and things like that to put them in that situation. I mean, they, they've outscored their opponents in the last two weeks 23 to 3 in the fourth quarter. I mean, that's phenomenal. That, that'll win a game for you anytime. So, first down, ball is at Minnesota's own 48 yard line. Vikings lead at 17 14. And this possession, Mike, is critical of the game. I mean, there's 430 left. If the Vikings get a first down, they're going to own the clock. And for Chicago, they need to stop them from getting the first down so they can get the ball back. Scotty Graham gets around. Walt Harris slows him down, and Graham may be Scotty a yard game. Good gang area. tackling by the Bears. Brian Cox among those in on the stop, along with Carl Denver Simpson. Hey, you see all the hats on the ball? Bears, see, they know. There comes a time in a game, there comes a time in a point in the game where who's ever on the field, your offense or the defense, you've got to get the job done to win the game for you. And the Bears need to get the job done now to get out here. See all the hats around and look at them. They need to get the job done to get their offense back on the field. And the same thing for Minnesota. It's their time. They need to get a first down and keep the clock and the ball on their side. Moon, Ismail has it. Penalty marker thrown. And that looks in the vicinity of a holding penalty. Another costly penalty for Minnesota. They push it back. Vikings, by the way, with two timeouts remaining. Bears have all three of theirs left. Offense, number 77. Hands to the head. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. Stringer on the penalty. Corey Stringer, the right tackle. Big Corey Stringer. You know, watch. Watch them blocking. He's going to be up top here on Al Fontenot, and he's going to get his hands up in his face mask. But see, first of all, Corey's too high. That's the first thing. Then he gets his hand up there in the face mask. It's late in the game. Corey's a big guy. Look at the size of him. He's like 330, and he's big, and he's too high, and he gets his hand up there in the face mask. And that's the rule. It's, you know, you can't get your hand up there in the face mask of defender. Their 10th penalty gives them a second and 19. Moon under some pressure. Amp Lee on the screen pass has some blockers ahead of him. Lee cuts from behind. He's still going. Marty Carter brings him down very close to a first down. Terrific run from Amp Lee, an 18 yard pickup. Oh, watch it. Watch this play. I mean, this is a good play. The timing on this is perfect. Watch them let the guys rush up field. Watch them. They come from all over the place. The offensive line watch, lets these guys go and then. See, they're upfield, and they let him go by, and then watch these three guys here on Minter. How would you like to be Minter in this play? Look at him. He's getting just driven. And then Amp Lee's out the gate, and he cuts it upfield. Alonzo Spellman's shaking up on the play. Bears have really been... Look, look, look at Alonzo Spellman. Look at his pants. He's got blood all over him. He's shaking his knee. His leg looks crooked. Hey, you don't think this is a physical game. Look, he looks look, like he's in the meat department at the supermarket yeah. with that uniform. Yeah, he looks like he was uh, beating up the meat, like Rocky, <laughs> down there in the meat room. But the hand is where the injury is. Amp Lee with his fifth reception with a big play, meanwhile, for Minnesota. On the, completion. Yeah, as, as the defensive lineman, when you throw using your hands, you lead with your hands all the time. I mean, you, you throw them in there, grab onto a guy, and then you need them to tackle the ball and strip the ball. I mean, they get bent around, and they get broken, they get dislocated. And that's by the look of things down there, that's what it looks like. That's what it appears to be. They once that has had to deal with a number of injuries. He's already lost Raymond Harris, Michael Timpson, Donnell Wolford. And you can just see by that left leg moving that he's in some pain. Third and one coming up from Minnesota. Jordan goes in motion. Warren Moon got the first down all by himself to the 38-yard line. And the 39-year-old hanging tough despite being nicked up himself. Mike, like I said, that, that screen play was a huge play they're backed up they need 15 yards to go for a first down and now look they're in control of the clock and in control of this game sitting on a three-point lead in Bears territory 
chewing up the clock. They stay in the huddle. They wait to the last minute. They're going to let this thing wind down. They're in control. That screenplay was a huge play in this game. Bears need a defensive play. They're without Wolford. They're without Spellman right now. Need someone to step up. Scotty Graham goes hard into the hole. Down to the 36 and a flag on the play. Brian Cox in on the tackle. Joe Kane in the area as well. Yeah, well, you know, the guys are down and they're hurt and no one's around. And then, then you, now comes time for Cox. It's Cox time. Watch him. He's going to come into the picture there, number 52. Watch him. Boom. Lays the wrap on it. I mean, that's yeah, he's trying to cause something. I mean, it'd be nice Holy for him to see that ball pop offense, out there. Number 66, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. Jarek on the hold. Cox trying to fire up his teammates. 218 remaining. And the Bears have all three of their timeouts left. But they also have a shaky field goal kicker in Carlos Huerta in his first year in the NFL. A first and 20 now coming up from Minnesota. There you see the timeouts left for both teams. Moon to throw on first. Throws it out of the backfield. Evans has it. And Evans cuts down to the 39-yard line. Kane and Smith in on the stop. And the Bears are going to use their first timeout. Get one before the two-minute warning. Ten-yard pickup. Force them to run a play, Mike, is, is what, they're, what the idea behind that. I mean, they, they don't want to let it run down to two minutes. Now they're going to force the Vikings to run a play before the two-minute warning. Is what that does. So again, the Bear defense needs to come up with something big. Of course, coming up next week on Fox. Fox NFL Sunday begins with America's most watched pregame show. Cowboy star Troy Aikman will discuss the increasing challenge of leading his team back to the Super Bowl, especially without the likes of some of his main receivers and the problems the Cowboys have had. Don't miss Fox NFL Sunday. Check local listings for the time in your area. But a good one here at Soldier Field this afternoon. Game was tied at 14 at halftime. The Scott Sisson field goal, the only points in the second half. Second and 10 coming up. Carter in motion. Moon fakes and the pressure fires. Almost picked off. Marty Carter was right there. Vincent Smith wasn't fooled. They had the two tight ends set in. And then, you know, they, they fake the run to the left. And then Warren Moon runs out the back door on a naked. Okay, see the two tight ends here? Now, there's the fake toss. And then he goes out the back door. But Vincent Smith isn't fooled. And he puts the pressure on him. Almost picked off by Marty Carter. That's the kind of pressure you need. Boy, that would have been an ideal situation for him there. But now they got third and ten, and this is a big play. The underrated Marty Carter is going to come up with a big play, but still third down and ten, and there you see the time remaining. 2.03, and Minnesota calls another timeout, so they're down to one remaining. See, see how that timeout paid off for Chicago? I mean, the, the 2.07, they call a timeout and force them to run a play, knowing that the Vikings like to pass the ball. So they pass the ball, and it's incomplete, and that stops the clock. So it's a four-second play it took off there, and it stopped the clock, and now it's third and ten. So they're hoping that they can get the ball back with just under two minutes left and give their offense time to march down the field. Moon conferring with Green and Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator. Walt Harris, the rookie, with an active game. Cox starting to pick it up here in the fourth quarter. It was quiet for the first half. Well, the reason he's been so quiet is because Minnesota, when they have run the ball, they've run it outside. And they know they don't want to run up the middle because Brian Cox is a factor there. They get him piled up inside, and they run the ball off tackle outside. And then in the pass department, they've had great pass protection up front against the nickel rush the Chicago Bears. Third down and 10. Minnesota leading 17-14, 203 remaining fourth quarter. 
Moon in the shotgun. Looks, fires, incomplete. Minifield broke it up. And a fourth down coming up. He's played very well this afternoon. Did have one pass interference penalty, but he's been very aggressive. And the defense once again holds against the Vikings offense. Oh, two things here. Just under two minutes remaining. Bears trailing by three. The pros jump after students who can hang above the rim. But for the student whose strength is explaining the formula for reaching such heights, Miller Brewing Company supports the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund, providing for the brightest at historically black public colleges and universities. And while some students take you to new highs, Miller Brewing Company believes it's important to support others, working quietly to take you even higher. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Pack up your stuff. I got a little surprise for you here. Check it out. What do you think about that? We got real time, 3D, lush organic environments. How's that make you feel, buddy? Feel a little like your days are numbered? I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. You're hurting my elbow. Is that Italian? No, Bandicoot, it's an Australian name. Dana Delaney and Jason Priestley. Guess maybe you better swear me in. Tuesday Stone World Broadcast Premiere Tuesday. One fifty-nine remaining fourth quarter. Soldier Field in Chicago. Vikings leading the Bears to fourteen. Berger will come on for his ninth punt. Bobby Ingram back at his ten. Bears trailing by three. They have two timeouts remaining. Berger, good high kick. Ingram, fair catch at the nine. And Chicago's got a long way to go to get themselves in field goal range. Berger does his job. And again, Chicago with a shaky field goal kicker. Carlos Huerta, just four of seven this year. Two of the misses inside of 40 yards. He missed a 44-yarder, although it may have been deflected earlier today. I'll tell you, the defense did what they needed to do, and they called the timeout, and things worked in their favor, and now they get a minute 52 left to drive the field. I want to welcome those joining us here at Soldier Field in Chicago. Good NFC Central battle. Just under two minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Minnesota leads, but Chicago with the ball, two timeouts remaining. The screen pass, Robert Green, but he's hit at the eight. Harlan Barnett with an excellent tackle. It has been a defensive battle here in the second half. Only one field goal in the second half. Well, the defense really took over in the second quarter, and it's been a defensive effort. There's been turnovers and whatnot, and they've put a burden on the offense here in the second half. Conway catches it at the 18, shy of the first down. As the clock continues to tick, Corey Fuller on the stop. And the Bears with two timeouts remaining. Third down and two. Kramer looks for Timpson. Incomplete. Wayne Washington right there. He's come close to a number of interceptions. And fourth down coming up for Chicago. And the passing problems continue for Chicago's offense. They came into the game wanting to get the thing timing down. They, they've made some changes. They moved Conway outside, and they put Ingram in the slot position. But they're still, throughout the course of the game, they haven't been able to connect. Along with Bill Moss, Mike Brin on hand in Chicago. And it's been a very physical game from the get-go. Typical of these two rivals. Fourth down and two. Kramer, quick drop, throws, complete. And good for a first down, Michael Tip. No, they say he was out of bounds. One of the officials saying out of bounds, and Minnesota will take over. Wanstant and this Soldier Field crowd can't believe it.
You're going to watch Timpson on the sideline. He makes the catch. Suppose you get both feet in. Did he have possession? The referee, the side judge, is, the head linesman is looking down at the ground at his feet. And he's saying his feet stepped out. He, was, he didn't look at his hands to see if he had possession. It appeared to me that he had the possession, and he got his feet in bounds. It looked like that right foot may have just been out. You have to have both feet in. Nobody in this place had a better view than that official. No, nobody had a better view. He was right on top of it. There's the catch. He has it in his hands. One foot down. There's the second foot. And it touches the white, white marker there on the sideline. That's going to be out of bounds. Apparently, he didn't have possession when the right foot went down the first time. Moon will hand off. Scotty Graham quickly hit at the 18. And the Bears will call another timeout. They'll have one remaining. Minnesota leading 20 to 17. They could have tied the game, but Carlos Huerta missed a field goal earlier in the half from 44 yards out, one that may have been deflected. Yeah, it may have been deflected, but it was a good snap. It was a good hold, and the trajectory was just too low. When you're going right over the top of your offensive lineman's helmet, it's going to get tipped. Whether it did or not, I don't know, but it does hit the goalpost. And that's his third miss of the season so far, and, and I wouldn't be surprised, talking with Dave Wanstead, if that wasn't his last attempt. What a fine line between winning and losing. Wanstead has had his problems today in terms of injury woes. Raymond Harris, their running back, lost for the game, sprained knee. Danell Wolford, who returned an interception in the first half for a touchdown, also hurt his calf, and he's been out. You see Timpson also banged up a knee, although he came back, and Tony Carter with a hamstring. Huerta hoping for an opportunity. A guy who kicked in the CFL the last two years took over for the veteran Kevin Butler. Wants a chance. Second down. Both teams with one timeout remaining. Graham goes nowhere. In fact, for a loss. And third down coming up. Warren Moon first action since the first week when he uh, banged up did not play last week 22 completions 239 yards this game presented by the authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited so the Bears take their final time out Minnesota still with one remaining third and long for Warren Moon Bears hoping to get one more shot at it. 56 seconds left. Next Sunday, exciting action. NFL action here on Fox. Sunday doubleheader. Packers and the Vikings. Also the Bears and the Lions. Plus other exciting regional action. The NFL on Fox next Sunday. Great games next week. Third down, Scotty Graham again. Powers in. And well shy of the first down to the 16. And the Bears out of timeouts. Dennis Green, team holds on. They'll go 3 0. Best start in 21 years for the Vikings. And the hats off to Foch Fazio and his defensive staff, Mike. I mean, they came in here today. I mean, they were they haven't played base defense. They haven't had Daryl Talley. They haven't even had a strong side linebacker play in the last two weeks because they've had to play run and shoot style teams. And they come in here today and they mix it up well with the Bears, who one of the Bears are trying to establish a power running game and then they get the ball outside. And this was great defense today by Minnesota. I, I really didn't expect to see this out of this group. Wanstott staring at a one and two start, the great opener in a victory here against Dallas on Monday night. But a poor performance last week against Washington. And a very tough one here this afternoon. So Minnesota's called their final timeout. And they're going to attempt a field goal. McDaniel and Kane, some veterans. So this could be a huge victory for the Minnesota Vikings. And a lot of people surprised, perhaps, at this 3-0 start. And they beat two playoff teams in the first two weeks in Detroit and Atlanta. Bears with a winning record 
last year, so they're off to an excellent start. Well, they're going to get two shots here, actually. I'm talking about the Bears. I mean, you can block this and take it back, or if they score here, they still have to kick off, and you get the chance of returning a kickoff. Scott Sisson from 35 yards out, and he puts it through. 20 to 14 lead for Minnesota. So the only chance for the Chicago Bears is to return the kick for a touchdown. A field goal does not do them any good anymore. And you know, like I said, I mean, I, we talked about it. Dave Wanstead said offensively, what's been the problem? Everyone says they're passing game. It hasn't been good, and they blame the wide receivers, and they blame Eric Kramer. But he said it was because third and long situations. We've got ourselves in too many third and long situations. And offensively, almost every time they had the ball and were driving down the field, they ended up in the third and long situation. And they weren't able to capitalize. And the offense doesn't practice third and long. They're used to practicing third or five, third and five or less. And there's so many things you can do with third and five or less. Yeah, you have the draw, you get a run play, the quick passes, the high percentage passes. I mean, they're not used to seven step drops by Kramer with third and eight and ten. His number one concern really came true, unfortunately, for Dave Wanstead. And you see the frustration. Mitch Berger will kick off. Green, Ingram, and Jackson deep. That's Jack Jackson very deep. Ingram and Green also back there. Six seconds remaining. Chicago needs a touchdown. You're going to see a squib kick. And he's going to kick this and let this kick. He's going to get the clock roll. Berger does kick it downfield. And it'll go out of bounds. Out of bounds. That's going to be at the 40. So not what Berger wanted to do. Mitch Berger upset with himself. Well, that's not what he wanted to do at all. With squib kick, you want to kick it right down the middle on the ground and have people touch it get the clock rolling. And give your coverage unit time to get down there and around it. So Kramer will have a chance to heave it downfield and try for the Hail Mary. He'll spot the ball at the 40-yard line. Saw Sisson on the sidelines. I mean, he knew. He knew that was. That's a no-no. Ingram, Simpson, Conway split out to the right side, near side. Kramer looking to just to fire it downfield. Heaves it up high. And it's picked off. Robert Griffith's interception, and this one is over. And the Minnesota Vikings off to their best start in 21 years. The Vikings 3-0 on the season, including two very impressive road wins. You know, Mike, that was their 10th interception in three games. And it's been the defense that has done it for the Vikings. They bend but don't break. They were averaging 379 yards a game. These guys done a great job today. Vikings win it over the Bears here at Soldier Field in Chicago. 20 to 14 the final. We'll be back. It's the storm.